Let's see. Okay, we want to welcome everyone to Alpine City Planning Commission meeting of March 21st, 2023. Um, we have with us um, from the Planning Commission, Troy Slade, John McKay, um, Suze Wittenberg, and myself, Jane Greiner. Um, we know for sure Jeff Davis won't be here, but we will likely have a couple other members joining us as we go. From the city, we have Jed Mulestein, the city engineer, Ryan Robinson, the city planner, and Heidi Jackman. And Marla Fox is recording in the other room for us. And we want to welcome everyone. And the opening prayer will have Troy Slade give, and then I'll lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Our dear Father in heaven, we are thankful that we can be able to be gathered here peacefully and um, thankful for this wonderful community which we are able to live in and the beauty that surrounds us. We pray that we can be able to make uh, wise decisions tonight and that we can uh, be able to do what is best for our city and, and our citizens. And uh, once again, we're thankful for the moisture which um, we've received and we ask these blessings and we do so in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Please stand. <laughs> okay, repeat the Pledge of Allegiance with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and for the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We welcome Alan McDonald from Planning Commission. Um, let's see. We don't have any reports or presentations today, and so we'll just move right into our action items. And the first action item we have is the conditional use permit from Cherry Hills Farm Produce Stand that's along the Alpine Highway. And um, we will have uh, Ryan, are you going to present that to us? Okay. Take it away. <laughs> profanity. Um, oh, yeah, get, get call. No. Yep. Okay, so this is going way too fast. Uh, this is the Cherry Hill Farms uh, produce stand. Uh, it's a conditional use permit. Uh, so submit it as it in 645 South uh, Alpine Highway. Uh, it's a CR 40,000 zone. Uh, produce stand is, is listed as a conditional use in this zone. Um, as you can see, the definition of a, of a conditional use is the Utah State Code. Um, a, a land use that because of its unique characteristics or potential impact of the land use on the municipality, surrounding neighbors or adjacent land uses may not be compatible in some areas or may be compatible only if certain conditions are required that mitigate or eliminate the detrimental impacts. So with a conditional use permit, it's a or excuse me, it's an administrative decision so we're just applying the law to this. What we're looking at is to see if, because of its unique use, if any conditions need to be implied that would, would mitigate some of those impacts, their potential impacts on the neighborhood. Um, the city code has a list of criteria that needs to be met. Um, the applicants need to show that they're, they're meeting those. This same uh, list that you can see in front of you is the same ones that we can tie conditions to. Um, so any condition that we, we would like to impose on this uh, conditional use permit, we have to tie it back to one of these standards in our code. Um, so that's what we're, we're working on here. Um, let's see, we went through that. And they, the applicant submitted their response to these, uh, these requirements. It's in your packet, uh, and you can, you can see those as well. So they've met that uh, requirement. Uh, there's a, there's a section of the code, I think 32360 uh, identifies produce stands as having some additional uh, standards that need to be met uh, in order to, 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 get, to obtain a conditional use permit. Staff went through those and we've met, or this application would meet those. There's a couple that we'll talk about, uh, mainly the parking requirements that need a little extra attention on these, but um, so, so with these, uh, with the conditional use, it requires that you meet the standards in 3.24 for off-street parking. Um, Jed's going to touch a little bit more on that, um, but there is an exception in there that uh, if a project can, can makes a point that it needs some exceptions to the parking requirements, it can be 
reviewed by you guys with a recommendation to the city council that, that an exception be made to our parking standards, and that's in the code as well. So they're requesting, and again, Jed will go way more in depth on this than I am, but they're requesting an exception for a paved parking lot and then lighting in the, uh, for their parking lot. As far as the lot width area and shape, uh, this isn't changing anything on the, the current lot, so everything meets there. The use of, uh, as we talked about, a produce stand is a conditional use in this zone. There's no trails or additional uh, outdoor amenities that would come with this. Um, it just kind of is what it is. And then in the general plan, we can kind of see what the CR 40,000 zone um, is, is intended to do or, or the vision of it, what we'd like to see there. Uh, so I'll turn it over to Jed and, and then we can maybe go over questions you guys have on this. Can you just go to their site plan? Yep. <clears throat> so um, staff worked with the applicant to, um, to get the access to their parking area off of Bateman Lane. Um, as you know, they've operated on Alpine Highway for quite a while, and it's been a safety concern of everybody's for a while. So they've submitted a plan that um, has the access coming off of Bateman Lane, which we like. Um, as Ryan mentioned, our code does um, require that conditional use permits follow the off-street parking ordinance which requires a paved parking lot with lighting and grading and drainage and all of those things. Um, the applicant is requesting an exception to the off-street parking ordinance. They've been operating with a non-paved parking lot for I don't know how many years, mm -hmm. a lot, <clears throat> and they're proposing to continue to keep doing that. And so. I don't know if I want to, Ryan said I was going to go in a lot of detail. I don't know if I want to go in, into all the detail. <laughs> Just general. <clears throat> but I mean, in general, there are 11 criteria of the parking lot, of the off-street parking ordinance. Five of those deal specifically with the parking lot being paved. And mm -hmm. they're obviously requesting except. And, an and this is in our conditional that. permit use ordinance that all these parking restrictions are? The conditional use ordinance mm -hmm. references the off-street parking oh, ordinance. Okay. And so we're, okay. this is what we're looking at now, the off-street okay. parking ordinance. Thank you. Um, so five of the criteria deal with a paved parking lot. They're requesting exception to that. Mm -hmm. um, they do meet some of the criteria. Number four talks about how it needs to be graded so you won't have stormwater issues. They are graded so it is sloped and it won't pool water. Um, there is the lighting requirement. Um, in our opinion, the lighting requirement is more specific for a use that would be used in the night. Um, this is a use that obviously is held during the daytime. So mm -hmm. in our opinion, I don't know that uh, the lighting would be required in this situation. Um, it talks about how if the parking is near a residential area, you need to have screening. This is obviously on a large parcel of land with no residential neighbors nearby, so that wouldn't be required. And then it also talks about um, landscaping and off-street loading are the last two items. Um, neither of which, well, the landscaping, they wouldn't, they would be requesting exception to that. Mm -hmm. The off-street loading is essentially a requirement that just says you need to make sure you have room for trucks to deliver to your property, depending on what use your project is. Um, in that regard, I actually don't know if large trucks are going to mm -hmm. deliver um, produce to the site, so we could ask them the applicant that question but but overall um, they like like I said they're requesting an exception to these parking ordinances <coughs> where they don't meet or apply um, one other item um, the off-street parking ordinance does say that the parking should not be allowed in the front setback area mm -hmm. and this site plan does show parking in the front setback area um, beyond that, um, it is staff's recommendation. We put in the staff report here that um, they are showing that the access is off of Bateman Lane. We would recommend that they have signage along the Alpine Highway restricting parking 
and directing traffic to the entrance on Bateman Lane. And then as a side note, um, staff has worked with the applicant on a minor two lot subdivision, which doesn't go through the planning commission city council process. And you can see that they are um, changing the entrance of Bateman Lane. And I should say they are improving the entrance of Bateman Lane, which will turn this into a, a two way road and greatly improve that intersection. So the access to Bateman Lane and access to their fruit stand should be much improved with the completion of their minor subdivision. So I believe that's all I had to report. Did you um, on that Bateman Lane, is that the full length of Bateman Lane along their property line? Yes. Okay, not just to where their entrance yeah, not is. Not just the intersection, okay. so they will improve it along their property frontage. Right. Are we trying to get to a minimum number of parking stalls here on this to be compliant, or is it just as they laid it out? I, I think they, they meet the requirement. It's square footage for the building that they would have to, for the parking lot standard, so they would they would meet that. I think they even that, went that, over three that, that we talked about, Ken. In the uh, front easement? Yeah, and so we'll, with our, uh, with the conditions that we've imposed, or that we, we've asked uh, to consider on this, one of them is that, uh, Number two, no portion of the setback area adjacent to Alpine Highway or Bateman Lane will be used for off-street parking purposes. So we would, in our conditions, we would recommend to, in the motion that you guys make to make sure none of those are within that 30-foot setback. Shift mm -hmm. Yeah, just shift it back a little bit. Yep. Um, I have a question. Even though the, it meets the parking for the size of the building, um, we have a known um, uh, customer count from previous years that will you know tell us how about how much parking that we need um, but that wouldn't be you know it, it would be different than the ordinance um, are we allowed to request additional parking beyond what the ordinance says yeah if we tie it back to a condition within the okay. when I think parking and, and traffic and circulation is, is part mm -hmm. of that um, and speaking of the applicant too, any employees wouldn't park in this. This mm -hmm. would strictly be for, uh, for, for uh, sure. citizen use or residents yeah. use. No, I understand. Customers, okay. that's the word I'm shooting for, customer that's use. That's the word, customers. And then we'd also recommend, and, and Jed uh, touched on this uh, as well, but uh, having signage along Alpine Highway, mm -hmm. um, directing traffic and, and not yeah. allowing off street parking. On but the there highway. will have to be some overflow parking because this won't be sufficient parking. Yeah, and that, that's so something we where can are, you know, Then where are they going to park along Bateman? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. anyway, just a thought I want to, to ask about to see if that was something that can be tied to a one of the yeah. reasons. Okay, yep. Yep. thank you. Um, I think that's all we had on staff report. You can see our staff recommendations for the conditions. Um, we, we've also discussed this in our, our development okay. review committee meetings. Um, just an additional one and, and we can help with this as needed but uh, we've got a condition that we can impose on uh, hours of operation if they're not going to have uh, lighting uh, we could we could set hours of operation that you know from from eight to eight or or whatever is sufficient dust just to dawn. yeah dust till dawn um, just just stuff like that to consider as well and then um, yeah it's only open seasonally so we could also say you know dust till dawn from April to mm -hmm. October, whatever it ends up being, um, to do that. So that's our staff report. You can see in the model motions, um, we just had one with the sample motion to approve with conditions or to table uh, for further study. So uh, with that, we will answer any questions uh, that you might have. Okay. Can you bring up <clears throat> those, the other pictures of the, that's kind of the proposed building, like right there. Yep. So where's the, this is really cool. And so that will actually replace the existing building. So where's its frontage? Does it still face the front or of Alpine Highway? Or will you, because you're going to come in through Bateman, where's the orientation of that? Like the, the That would be a great question for the applicants. If well, they, and I understand <laughs> it faces southward, correct? South? Oh, come on. So you're, OK. Go back Hello, to the Ken. Side of Hi. Um, so the drawing that says the west elevation yeah. is we're, we're in the 45 of, a, of Alpine, so mm -hmm. 
that faces the highway. The highway. So you'll see that front with the porch mm -hmm. type thing in the in the front. So that's your yeah. storefront plus, and the people will actually that will be your entrance. So they yes. come around park mm -hmm. and then go yeah. back around to the. So front from the house. parking lot, so you'll see the, the south front. elevation, and then you'll walk around to the front. Mm -hmm. you know. Jane, who's speaking, please? Sorry, Ken Berg. Thank you, Ken. You're welcome. <laughs> we all know where you live. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, so uh, the lighting question was answered because I know that sometimes in the fall, it did stay open after dark, um, and it was people seemed to love to continue to come. So we would either need to restrict that hours of use or um, add the lighting. Um, I'm kind of okay with either one based on the fact that there aren't houses right there. But um, personally, um, let's see, let's talk about the surface of your parking area. I don't think it needs to be paved either, but what is your plan? Well, our, our plan is, is we're trying to walk this very fine line mm -hmm. of a produce stand mm -hmm. that meets your requirements but doesn't look like a commercial site mm -hmm. because we don't want to set the precedent of, oh, this is now a commercial site, so next right. door should be a commercial site and, you know, make more problems for you guys. Mm -hmm. And so we're proposing to build a stable um, parking lot, a graded parking lot that has, you know, typically like a gravel base, mm -hmm. but then we may over time, like we have previously in the existing one, um, do a top dressing of bark chips or something just to give it. The other one was charm, like sod, wasn't it? Of, wasn't, sort of was thing. it just sod on the other one or was there actually bark? There was bark. There was bark. Okay. Yeah. yeah no bark is good. So on the parking, did you say you're going to enter in Bateman Lane and go around the back of the building, or are you just mm -hmm. going to? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, that, it's kind of light, but you can to see To make it the there. requirements to to have the access management, so you can make that turn on to Bateman, and then you know make that entrance. Can't be too that's close the, to that's it. the safest. Yeah. What safest. is the square footage of the building without the porch wraparound? The thirty-two hundred, I think. Yeah. 50 by 60, okay. We lost our screens, by the way. Okay, just making sure. <laughs> um, so Ken, what, what are the months of operation as well as the hours that you're proposing? Sun up to sundown from... You know, spring to fall. Spring to fall. <laughs> <laughs> Basically during the fruit growing season until you run out of fruit. Yeah. But like you said, the sun up to sundown. You're, you're going to keep. Important. You're going to keep the uh, little shack, the little treat. What shack. about the little green shack that you've been selling treats out of? Answer that. Um, we we might keep it this year. You'll have to come up and oh. state your name. I'm sorry, you just don't get away with that. This is Derek Rowley. Um, Can you give your address as well? Uh, we let him off the hook, but even though I don't live in Alpine, yeah, you, you have to state okay. your address. Three forty one West Six Hundred North in Linden. Um, 84042. Um, so, yeah, we, we don't like to be open after dark. We try and mm -hmm. kick people out because okay. most of our employees are teenagers and I don't like them there after anyway. <laughs> um, well, I don't, what was the question? The little green shack. Oh, the, we, the might have to use, we might have to use it this year um, because we're a little bit behind in getting the, the building up. Um, but the plan is to eliminate that and to have everything have inside. inside. Okay. So, so um, that, that brings up a really good question, though, of... Um, if we're granting a conditional use permit and you're going to use the green shack and you're having construction go on at the same time, um, that's kind of concerning. Um, so there definitely wouldn't be construction at the same time because I'm the one doing the construction. So I'll either be working in the ice cream shack or doing construction. <laughs> so when do you foresee this to be finished then? So the cooler portion of the shed, mm -hmm. so where we're able to store the fruit, mm -hmm. um, that will be done by June 1st. Um, and if we're mm -hmm. unable to finish the rest of it, we'll just wait until next winter. Okay, so this almost needs two conditional use permits. If we're going, to me, if we're going to approve this, but it's not going to look like this till next year, so don't we will... need a conditional use permit for this year? Jed and Ryan, like if we're... Oh. 
if we're approving a conditional use permit for this year with the existing or does their existing permit already yeah so so conditional use permits aren't like business license they don't renew every year it used to be like every three years but then we made it so it was non-renewable yeah so we so, didn't need to renew so it, it just goes on but um it's almost the use if it, if they okay. if they violate any conditions of the use then we can okay. we can or the permit then we can okay. pull it well what about what about the when do you propose the improvements to Bateman Lane to be made so that an entrance over there could be used? My understanding is we can't open it until the improvements to Bateman Lane are done. Isn't that correct? You can't open the new building. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, I'm just wondering if the improvements to Bateman Lane and the new parking lot could be done first because right now we have a safety perm that there, I, I think we have a safety condition problem that would warrant even pulling the conditional use permit based on the traffic right now and the number of complaints and the people who say they've almost hit someone and it's not your fault it's just existing and i'm just wondering is there a way that you guys could do the improvements to bateman lane and get the parking lot in place before you start this year and then do the building after that i mean just trying to think of a solution that, 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 that's that's the plan. The, the plan is to have it all done. We, we won't be opening till because of the late spring. Fruit's not going to be ripe until the end of July this year. Okay. The plan is to have Bateman Lane improved, the building in place, just like you see it on the site plan and everything, okay. by July 20th or whenever the peaches are ripe. Okay. I don't, I don't think we hold it hostage. No, I don't either, but I do think that if it's going to be the whole year, um, we should have a temporary plan in place. Um, it sounds like they're agreeable. But yeah, it does. Be done at the same time. Yeah, which I mean, is like, which is I great. have every intention of it all being done. Yeah, like, and if that if yeah. that's the requirements of the permit, then we'll. I'm comply mostly with just those. concerned. I mean, I think your new building, your new cooler, all of that's <coughs> going to be amazing. It's going to look really good, but I'm mostly concerned about the parking. And if that were done, then I wouldn't care how long it took to do the other building, which I know you want to get it done because it's your business. <laughs> but I don't know. That's just well, you anybody else have sign? thoughts signs out last but, year and yeah, I guess I guess I'm still a little confused because I'm my understanding from staff was that we would not be able to sell anything in that building if the road was not improved and the parking lot wasn't done well you were going to use the little green shack for snacks we're, we're gonna said. pick it up and move it down okay. next it, it's does that make sense Part of the same so I guess I didn't explain that very well okay so if if for some terrible reason it doesn't get done in time we'll just get a crane and we'll pick it up and we'll put it right next to that building at, okay. as if it was a part of that building. Okay. Or if it helps, we can show that it's on the south end of the parking lot. Yeah. You know, that yeah. while the building is finished, it's, it, we'll show it on this mm -hmm. updated site plan that has okay. the, the parking in there. Awesome. Just so that it has a place. Our, our plan is for it to all be done, just like it looks. Your little parking stuff's totally been ignored by the citizens. <laughs> You've well, tried to get that better oh, parking no, place up they're to They're the just east disobedient they just, they people. They always just pull right up on the, it's been like that it. forever. So. It, yeah, hopefully this solves hopefully it. This should solve it, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And it will be wonderful to have Bateman, Bateman Lane improved. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know who's going to maintain the sign so it doesn't say Batman Lane every other week, but yeah. we won't put that on you. People like to take the E off of that sign, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> Jed, what? Uh, is it the city's responsibility, or I guess it's a state road, so they would need to identify official no parking on Alpine Highway, right? I mean, what, what's okay. the effect of, of a business saying no parking along the highway? Yeah, versus it being marked red and yeah. enforced. Seems a little weak to me. That is a good question. We'd probably have to get permission through UDOT to put signage up in the park strip there because it is there right away. <clears throat> but they could have signage on their private property just beyond the park strip or mm -hmm. sidewalk. Well, which would be approved through Alpine City. Sure. Do you think we need to have him reach out to the state and find out about that, or do you think them just having their signage? I actually, I mean, do we want signs in the park strip coming into Alpine? Yeah. I'd rather not. That's what I was so, yeah, ask. let's well, let's just have them put it on their property. Like, if their yeah. storefront's going to face the front, 
there could be signage there, there could be signage on their property behind the sidewalk right. or something. Or well, yeah, that's so can we get permission from the state? We don't need it if it's on our... What about painting What the about curb? painting the curb red? That you would have to get permission from UDOT. Okay. Would that be hard to get? I don't know. Could you find <laughs> out? That would be the applicant's job to find out. Would they have to find that out because it's their curb and gutter? Well, it should, man. It, it is it is UDOT's curb and gutter. And the applicant, since it's their, um, their per application. Yeah, their application or their uh, frontage, I was gonna say, their street yeah. frontage, they would have to ask. Yeah. I'd be curious if you guys, if I could reach out to UDOT and ask if you wanted to paint, that, you know, if the city wanted to paint that, you know, red, or if you wanted to, to prevent people from parking there. It just might be a statement that would help the problem. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, we'll come help you paint it if you want. I'll bring my, I'll bring my <laughs> bucket and <laughs> we could arrange an Eagle project. Um. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure they do. <laughs> just not church sponsored and they're still have they still have all kinds of cubs. Come on, scouting still exists. <laughs> Do you guys have big trucks delivering stuff, or we have a box van? Box van, mm -hmm. similar to like what you drive from like Penske or something like that. Yeah, imagine it probably Bring comes real food. early and delivers stuff. Probably. Yeah, we we don't like it there when people are there. So yeah. there are tractors that'll drive through there and things like that while we're actually picking the fruit. But mm. but it would meet the requirements for that anyway with your other entrance. What other questions do you guys have? I'm excited about this. I yeah, think it's going to be wonderful. Awesome. It's going to be a definite yeah. long-term investment, but I think it's going to be really nice and a really nice improvement. So you guys are obviously are in it for the long haul, building the yeah, we're in everything. That's awesome. Yeah. I think it's a perfect welcome to Alpine. What other questions do you guys have? I just read through a lot of, I read through all Speak the, into your microphone, ma'am. And did you turn your notes. microphone on? Is yeah, your mic on? Okay. She's so soft and I'm so loud. I, I read <laughs> through all of our stuff this week. Very good. And so I see that you're planning on probably, it says due to like future expansion. So do you have a bigger picture that, that like, are we going to need to readdress this down the road if it grows and turns into the little red barn like down in? We have no intention Santa. of doing that, but well, I guess. We'll, so you you just plan on keep, uh, making a new building, yeah. rerouting it, and just kind of keeping that same little charming yeah. little spot. Great. That's, that was my question. Is it, so? Is like just for example, the lighting or the parking lot? Is that something we can kind of relook at a year from now and see how or what or? Yeah. So if they ever did want to change that or come in and do that, we would just amend their their permit mm -hmm. to to. Remove some of the if if we if we had those yeah. conditions of you know uh, yeah. offsetting the lighting and stuff that would be something we could look at again. And, and then if I'll, oh, oh go sorry. ahead no go I ahead. was just go. gonna say and if if uh, someone who has a conditional use permit is uh, it's not <coughs> mitigating those problems like if there a problem comes up then you can okay. talk to them again about it. Okay good. There's a whole process yeah or if they're and, and not you they're, guys just in general for, for conditional yeah. uses if if it was ever you know they were breaking a condition or anything like that then there's a whole process we yeah. could go through mm -hmm. but if we say hey no lights now and down the road we're like yeah man we really should have lights we if can. they want to change their hours yeah. they would come yeah. in yeah. to change their permit yep yeah. yeah um what about the number of parking spaces how many parking spaces are we showing i think there's 18 ken is that if, if you pull up the plan I mm -hmm. have the parking calculations on there based on your city code mm -hmm. that is essentially based up for your worst case scenario, mm -hmm. Christmas Day shopping for retail. <laughs> it, it shows we needed like nine spa or 13 spaces. I mm -hmm. think we have um, my, it's, I think the time, it's the time of night where I can't see. I know, and this is I've very light. That That's why I'm asking but instead over, of trying to over get. Over in the upper left hand six corner. Six, five, four. Up, up in this corner, uh, it, talks, it says there's 13 required spaces. That, that's, I mean, that's correct. We didn't, <laughs> uh, I think you have 18. Yeah. That you've got maybe, yeah, 18. Okay. Oh yeah, I see. So there's 10 and five and. So if this is just a dirt 
parking lot with no designated spaces, all you're saying is that there's basically room mm -hmm. for 18 spaces if people parked generally how they're supposed generally to generally how they're supposed to without lines or designations or anything else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's the part in the code that talk with the off street parking says there's, you know, this is how big each stall has to be. Those have been met. So I don't know if maybe that's a condition that the parking has to be I don't think so. It starts to get like parking. like you said, you don't want to tread past that line of businessy versus a fruit stand to me with the lines. Okay. Well, whatever point you want to close this and we can discuss, I'm happy to yeah. chat about that. Sure. Well, this isn't like an open, we're having discussion right now. Okay. So, I mean, you guys can sit down if you guys don't have any other questions. So this isn't like a hearing or anything, so. I, I mean, yeah, I'll, I mean, I'll just say I have a little bit of an issue with um, granting the exception mm -hmm. for paved parking mm -hmm. because you kind of have the idea that, oh, a conditional use permit, a little fruit stand. Well, no, this is a big building going. Mm -hmm. They sell slushies and candy and other things. I drive in and out of town, especially you know on hot summer days and afternoons and evenings, and it's about one or two or three people there. Mm -hmm. There's 10, 15, 20. I mean, there's a lot. Mm -hmm. um, it's a draw, right? So, you know, I, I'm, I, I'm kind of not, on, on the one hand, Jane, you're kind of saying here that well, it's a conditional use permit. It's just kind of a little, you know, country fruit stand, but mm -hmm. not really. <laughs> and I've seen the use of it. And so, I, you know, I can understand the lighting issue, for example, if a conditional use permit is going to say, look, we're, we're dawn to dusk, or, you know, we close it, you know, whatever we're going to put on that. But mm -hmm. um, I kind, you know, I can kind of see that, but... Um, I'm not, I'm not understanding mm -hmm. why you, like, like mm -hmm. necessarily the purpose to grant the exception uh, to, for the, the mm -hmm. you know, for, for the paved parking, everything that comes sure. along with paved parking, because with paved parking comes, you know, if it rains, you don't have mud and puddles, you have designated parking stalls, people will pull into those parking stalls efficiently and park next to each other rather than sort of willy-nilly in a, in a you know, gravel parking lot or bark parking lot that has no designated stalls, you know, no designated handicapped spaces. For example, if handicapped persons or disabled persons pull into the lot mm -hmm. and, they have, and, and there's nothing reserved for them close, I mean, there's kind of a reason where, you know, it's not really a mom and pop fruit stand. This is a, this is a business with a fairly large building going in um, such that we're requiring them to now improve Bateman Lane and enter off, you know, enter the delivery trucks off of Alpine Highway. I just think that we've kind of crossed over, blurred that line from a mom and pop fruit stand to, mm -hmm. you know, basically more of a seasonal business. That's okay. my perspective. Yeah, I can, I can see that. I think um, <clears throat> there's a few things to, to look at as well. Like, I think the idea behind this is a fruit stand, and they have. I'm sure this is an agricultural use of their property, um, not a commercial use because of the fact that it they grow their, you know, things, produce there. And I think this That's a commercial kind, of, uh, kind of comes back to when we, uh, to, in my opinion, it comes back to when we approved what was considered a fruit stand or not. And basically we kind of talked about their example and agreed that it was a fruit stand. So. I mean, I can see, I can see all of your that was points. Before we put a 3,200, allow to put it. Well, they already have, they already have a building there right now. They they have a building there right now. There's the there's the green one. They have a huge building. It's probably the same size, isn't it? It's within 10 feet. Yeah, that's yeah. already there. So the popularity is just growing. I mean, how like I mean, the, just just ask. We, I mean, we all drive in and out of Alpine. Mm -hmm. How many cars do you see at any given time right. that were parked up in the dirt off the road? And then along the road in in the the curb. bike lane mm -hmm. along the curb, and even on the other side of the street, so people were walking back and May forth. And ask that to me has gone a like you, you I, becoming I know. you know you're sort of blurring that line between a little yeah. the little fruit stand from a, you know a couple of years ago to you know the right. popularity and what it's becoming, and I'm just not seeing the problem with like mm. like, the, like it's like 
Let me your quasi business you know, ask them a question. Pave your parking lot. Are you maintaining your U pick parking area so that when you have U pick, they're not using the same parking lot? Uh huh. How much parking do you have right now in your U pick parking area? There's 20 spots. Okay. And people just didn't drive back there to use them for the fruit stand. Okay. Um, okay. So, anybody else like Allen's? I, personally, I don't want to see a paved parking area there. To me, a conditional use stand for a Either this is a fruit stand that happens to be really popular or it's a commercial use of property. I don't think this is, they're not applying for a commercial use of the property and their use matches what we said is a fruit stand. So I kind of feel like we don't, you know, and it's not zoned commercial and of course they wouldn't want it zoned commercial because it's, and I think it's a benefit to Alpine that it is um, I can't think of the right word. Green belt, agriculture, whatever. What do you guys? But Jane, why, why does granting the conditional use permit, like, like why do you tie that with, with an exception to our off-street parking ordinance? Yeah. I, mean, I, don't, I don't necessarily know. That right. They, they, can they don't ahead. have to be exclusive. They, have, they, they don't have, have to be have exclusive. They don't have a conditional use permit. We have a fruit yeah. stand. I'm yeah. just not sure that I see the purpose of exempting them from the parking. The I feel like it's unnecessary. What's, I guess there are other conditional uses mm -hmm. that would be more commercial in nature, is that right? Yeah. Yes, and, there and are. That we would want to make sure that they were compliant with our parking ordinance. Yeah, yeah, and, and the, the off-street parking requirement is for, for any, it's anything for that would anything. be required, yeah, right. not just primarily In terms of the paving and the lighting and the... We just yeah. referenced from our conditional use permit our off-site parking instead of having it have its own. For example, the lady who has the dance studio, if she wants to do her farmer's market, does she come in and apply for a conditional use permit when she does that and has to show us the amount of parking she has? I, I, I don't know what they've done in the past. You know what's happened with that, okay. Probably would. I'm just trying to compare different. it to other times when we've granted a conditional use permit. It seems um, like they have. If I remember correctly, it, it seems, seems like she's come in here and applied for a little farmer's market. Right, thing. she has, and I just don't remember where we applied the parking, mm -hmm. if she got permission from Purple to use their parking lot or something like that. Jane, I think she had to use a mass gathering application. Oh, thank you. Okay. Um, Marla, can you think of other conditional uses that we've had um, We've had a Christmas for. tree stand on Main Street in where Paul Anderson's building his building yes. before. We had it every year for several years. And what did they use for their parking? Street parking? Or did they have um, off-street? They I had to have had off-street parking to have met the ordinance, or we granted an exception. Yeah, I'm, they had some off-street parking that you could pull into that sure lot. Term. But I'm sure people parked on the street as well. But it wasn't paved, right? It's not paved. It wasn't paved because they just brought the Christmas trees in for a couple it's like of weeks. Like a temporary. A lot of conditional use permits are more temporary, which is yeah. like you're saying. This is a more of a permanent. You bring Christmas trees in, you sell them for maybe two or three weeks, mm -hmm. and you're done. This yeah. is a spring to fall. Right. Conditional use. I think there's I that. Yeah, that's kind of what this this law's always been. It's been just a really short time seasonal thing. It hasn't right. been for a permanent thing like this. Right. Well, and I think that is the idea behind conditional use permits. I think we all agree we love having a small fruit stand in town. We love having the apple orchard and the peach orchard there. We love that this is available to everyone. It's more of a safety, like where where the parking is going to be and does the parking need to be, you're saying does the parking need to be more improved than just gravel and, I mean, I haven't Are seen wedding receptions that have the barn thing and they have that kind of gravel park, you know what I mean? So I, I don't know, I'm I'm open to it, but so I get your point. Okay, so you're not, I mean, I, I, what if I, they I don't know you answered it? this, but like you're not gonna be open year round, because I mean, that, I want you to sell a, a lot of other things in there besides it will be fruit and stuff. Yeah, you have to do that. 
but it's not, but, but after fall, it's just get yeah. closed yeah, up. Yeah, it's huh? just gone. Okay, all right. Everything in Dell is grown from, like, yeah. the Yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought Alan brought up a really good point, though, about the, uh, the handicap uh, mm -hmm. re parking requirements. Yeah. yeah. Does are that you, apply for off-street parking? You could still Should. put some signs in, I guess. Yeah. I mean, that's would, a, wouldn't a, that a, have to that's apply? That's an ADA, ADA national yeah. requirement. Yeah. How, so how, they would have to put up a sign or something? Were you planning on addressing that? In our current mm -hmm. spot, we have two handicapped spots that are okay. marked. Oh, okay. So you would need to do that same on here? Okay. okay. That's a good point. I don't, I don't mind the non-paving, to be honest with you, because mm -hmm. I think paving introduces water control issues, uh, detention, retention issues, uh, taxes the, the storm field. drain. Um, and I, I think for a six month kind of operation, mm -hmm. um, it's just not needed. That's why I kind of asked that question, you know, could we try it for this year? I mean, just an idea. And then, mm -hmm. and then if it didn't work out or we're like, uh, you know, that's kind of a mess or whatever, mm -hmm. then we require them to have, I don't know, just sure. thrown out. Uh, although if we granted exception, we would have to say an exception based on an evaluation yearly or something like that. Yeah, I, I mean, because how can you grant an exception yeah. and then say, well, we're going to take our exception back next year unless you say that we want to do this permit with a review one year from now. Yeah, and that would be something we need to look at. I don't, I don't, I don't know if I've seen a, like a sunset clause on the mm -hmm. <laughs> like yeah. conditional use permit, but. Right. Um, well, you, to look at. it would have to be that what isn't working violates one of the. Um, yeah, so. It, it would have to go against one of those things to say, okay, this isn't working, so we need you to come back. Yeah, so if you look at, uh, I can actually just pull it up. That list. Yeah, so if you look at uh, H there, the location and design of off-street parking as well as compliance with off-street parking standards. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure we could tie some kind of standard to that as far as a review or or something like that. I don't, Yeah. but, but where it's in there, we can't tie conditions to that. That could yeah. certainly be something we consider. The other thing you could do is if you feel like the parking would be not efficient without it being paved and striped, you could increase the parking area. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess I'm still trying to understand. Like, like we, yeah. have, we have standards and guidelines mm -hmm. here, A through L, for a conditional use permit. Mm -hmm. And one of those is H, that the location design of off-street parking as well as compliance with off-street parking standards. And then we lay out. Mm -hmm whatever the standards for off-street parking are. Yeah. So I'm just trying to understand why, like, like, do you think it's more of a homey feel, a country feel? Why do you want to pull into a gravel parking lot I as opposed to a, <laughs> a paved parking lot? What's, what's the point in, in, in basically unhitching mm -hmm. this conditional use permit from our ordinance, which requires compliance with off-street parking standards? I think my personal thing is that it's, it, the paved area says to me, we're setting up a commercial area use and they're spending that expenditure for a paved parking lot that yells commercial and what we don't want is commercial well, there. Why did we draft our conditional use permit ordinance this way? Mm, to yeah, tie well, it to the off-street parking right. standards. I don't know, I didn't do it. <laughs> well, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's what we but do, right? That's why I'm people can apply for an exception. I'm just trying to understand the compelling need. No, I, I agree. I, I agree. Yeah. And I appreciate, and I'm, and I'm I appreciate wait, your... I'm just waiting to hear it. I, I appreciate that's why that. I, all I'm really getting is that it's either A, mm -hmm. the applicant wants mm -hmm. to save the money, mm -hmm. which is usually, mm -hmm. yeah. or, or B, it's like some sort of I feel like that's a compelling that, Okay. What? You, didn't, you didn't like my point? What was, what that? was your compelling point? That oh, the drainage. It just, it taxes, the, it taxes the storm well, drain. I see, mm -hmm. Well, no, I guess I didn't find that that compelling yeah. John, because <laughs> I think what taxes it more is if something's not graded well, if it doesn't drain mm -hmm. off well, and you have a rainstorm and you get big piles of, of mud, and then those turn into puddles yeah. and pits. And I mean, it's the reason that we pave it. It's the reason that, that the street outside your home is paved. Right? Yeah rather than dirt. So my compelling reason for me, it is I don't want this to become a commercial area. This is a 
temporary six month year use fruit stand and that's where I think that the it, feels more it fits temporary. and it feels temporary and I think okay. it's sufficient for the need without excess did you want to make a comment well you know we're talking about not complying with the parking mm -hmm. standards well within your standards itself you gave us the ability to ask for the exception right. on certain things and so in complying with the parking ordinance we're not that's why staff has been very careful asking for an exception we're not asking for a variance we're not asking to break your rules mm -hmm. we're asking for a recommendation yes or no if the exceptions that we're allowed to ask for are acceptable sure, you're allowed yeah. to ask for them yes but right. from our perspective you're correct the ordinance is what the ordinance right. is so i'm kind of waiting to hear something that tips this for well, why is this and and I think the, the struggle why does this tip the scales yeah. where we should grant you an exception to the ordinance that we have otherwise adopted right. in the city right in the like in why the, don't you want to pave it what's your reason for not wanting to pave it because we have a farm fruit stand that has the existing one has that country fill if we want to term, term uh, to use that has functioned that way long before I moved to Alpine that's, that's <laughs> for 50 years, years. but um, precedence you know precedence. no I think it's more of that's the look that we're going for mm -hmm. if that's unacceptable then you know what we have 13 parking spaces that are paved not 18 that aren't mm -hmm. you know and we'll just I mean the the reverse of it is instead of the exception we'll just meet the parking ordinance because it was referenced in the conditional use code that you need to meet it mm -hmm. you know we the conditional use ordinance was modified to allow this fruit stand to happen but we never addressed what the parking was when it was created yeah. now that we're going through the process probably the first and only <laughs> time that you'll have that we'll have this discussion mm -hmm. you know this is the this is the point of contention you know to decide what what was the real intent for uh, mm -hmm. a farm stand conditional use yeah. and the other thing too is a conditional use um, is intended to be possibly not permanent that it's used like this like say in the future somebody could change the to have trees in that area and move the parking somewhere else where if it's paved it is permanent well, semi-permanent, you know. Anyway, so you're just a few let's, thoughts. Let's grant an exception to the ordinance because sometimes, somewhere down the road, somebody might want to. Type that's not the reason the why. Yeah. That's not why. I'm just saying that's part of conditional use. To me, seems temporary. Like it, you're not setting it up as a permanent business but in this sort of method. It seems to me like this is a fruit stand mm -hmm. and that people enjoy, and that it's, if anything, growing in, in scope mm -hmm. and popularity. That then than otherwise, right? Okay, yeah. I think... And it's kind of not like you, you pull off a country road in in Fillmore or something and, and somebody's, you know, got a little fruit stand outside their orchard. Well, that's what You're it used to be. You're here in... That's what it used to be, yeah. but, but Alpine's not that anymore. Right. Yeah. So it's the thing that I'm hearing, too, they're really, whether you pave it or not, the 13... If you have the 13... 13 it's, versus 18 on park. Well, I feel like they're still going to need to stagger the way they park. There's just... Well, if you pave it, talking. like if they pave it, you do with they would that. Oh, you just they just wait. Or come no, they were, they'll park out on the road. They'll park out on Bateman Lane or something. I mean, the same thing any business does. Street, if street parking is legal, anybody who wants to can park on the street. That's why I'm saying we should paint that road red. But we so, don't have the ability to do that. But they can apply for it. Right, but but that. But, but so, but Bateman Lane, like anybody can park. If somebody goes to the junction and they decide to park across the street, street parking is legal. That's their choice. Well, they can park across the street right. and walk but, across but it. But now you're opening that can of worms because I remember when this came in a couple of two or three years ago, mm -hmm. and I voiced concerns that that and I don't know. I think it was a different group. Oh, I yeah. voiced concerns that right, I mean, right there. I agree. On the state route, okay. coming coming in with everybody parking right mm -hmm. on that street and. And, right. and you got people riding bicycles, now you got kids on, like, 
electric powered scooters and electric powered <laughs> electric bicycles. bicycles. We're scooting you know. everywhere anymore. Yeah. And we just know for the last couple of years that the popularity of it has made it a dangerous condition. Right. You know, right, right Which is there. why they're moving uh, it. Which is, is Bateman going to still here. be a one way? But, I, but, you know, but I'm still so concerned we're going to go have both ways. So where it's, it's not really that. Really, it's going to go That's why I want them to ask if they can apply well, to the city, and to it's the gonna state. Get more popular, and I'm even. I'm, I'm just sitting here wondering if those that amount of parking spots is going to be enough for because I think it's mm -hmm. going to become a lot more popular because they're going to sell but, more stuff. And I know, think, Troy, it's not their fault. People no, are just lazy. Their condition to just <laughs> parking right along. Yeah, you know, that's you know, why I would like them to apply to paint it red. But you can't punish a business you if they meet the ordinances, like you said, they either meet the ordinances or not. Like, take a look at that knot and pine. I mean, I knew from the get-go, there's no way in heck they have enough parking there. Yeah. But they met the ordinance, and they brought in the stuff that showed it. And so they got approved. And where do they park? They park at the church. They park at Purple parking lot. Like, they, there's, you know, just because of where they're located, it, it handles it because there's okay. all of these other people so who own parking lots that they piggyback question. off of. Are you going to get more efficient parking mm -hmm. with precise, with the, with the pavement and precise... <laughs> precisely laid out parking spaces or no designated parking spaces in a gravel lot. Sure. How, where are you going to get more efficient parking? You would get more efficient parking if it was marked, obviously. But it's still like, I mean, there's lots of, I, I still don't find that as compelling. <laughs> well, I'm still not land. sure what you're finding <laughs> compelling, to be honest. How, how, how about the, like, you gravel want a country with field. concrete bumpers? <laughs> yeah. I'm you could. You could like do you could do the gravel with the concrete. Yeah, that would meet help. in the middle. At least at least Bateman Lane does, isn't going to now be I, exactly Bateman Lane is, is going to be a two lane road. It's a good place for over. Is the yeah and that's it's the only not. Place. But it's at least that's a, that's a plus. Yes, there's it no, is. There's no, yes. it's not this. They could do concrete, or they could even do a railroad tie. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, but we could have a marking at the header of the parking oh, okay. spaces. So you want a country or ghetto? <laughs> I'm sorry, what, what, are we, what are we moving to? <laughs> okay, oh, pine. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, so grass and just, just you could you know, do. put those little cinder blocks underneath it. So yeah. it's, it's, it's okay. Scary. No, I was going to say we could, as part of the condition with with parking, mm -hmm. we could have language that would limit off-street parking entirely on. Mm -hmm. And on just kind of on the a, highway. Let it solve itself. Well, we could do it on Bateman as well. I don't know. But th then, then what would happen? More, well, I'm just saying if they if they need more parking for that, they would. They would have to expand, expand their own, parking. Yeah. yeah. But I don't I don't know if that's a solution. I don't It'd think be it's hard necessary to, to limit off street well, parking. Well, and it would be hard to have, do tie have it to that. Space to have like some as things you know as you see. If they didn't have to pave it, would well, it be a problem to expand your parking area? Well, it? yeah, every additional parking spot Except that's more tree. fruit trees, trees that we're taking out. Mm -hmm. So right now, the improvements that we're making to Bateman, mm -hmm. um, not only is it now two-way traffic, mm -hmm. full yeah, a huge Alpine city for Alpine. parking width, the part that we're improving, the frontage that's on the orchard side, is over 500 feet mm -hmm. that's like another 15 feet of their width 25 cars mm -hmm. along there you know that Could in essence you're street. taking yeah. off of alpine right highway and making yeah. them to to go around that that direction yeah i don't so. see any problem with off street parking on bateman well i don't either that, that that's their, that's their main and option. that's their it's their it's their property. It's it's their frontage, just like someone parking in front of your house, you know, even though I know it's a fruit stand conditional use business even. <laughs> uh, are there a bunch of houses up Bateman Lane? I don't even Farther know. Farther up, past their, past their property, but where they're at. So they're going to be complaining. <laughs> well, yeah. they're going to be happy because they can pull in and out. Right now, they have to drive all the way well, around. Yeah. That's going to be a plus for them. Yeah, right now, yeah, they, they, they hate that. The okay, People it. sneak yeah. through there all the time, even though it's one way. <laughs> It's so annoying to go to, you go to somebody's house who lives right at the top of that, you have to go clear out and around three different roads in to get to their house because <laughs> Bateman is only a one ever, way. Right. Why, what, was, what was the purpose for that? Because it wasn't just the developed. Way the property developed. 
these guys didn't develop their property at the same time. Like if somebody, it's just by, like on 300 North over by Alpine Elementary, yep. where the Burgesses have theirs, or they are not developing. They don't have to develop their side of the road until their neighborhood goes in. So the side that does develop, there is a section in our ordinance that allows for a partial width street, mm -hmm. and that's what Bateman Lane is. And has been for like 50 years. Ever. Yep. Yep. Hey. Um, what do you think about um, headers to the parking spaces? It's okay if you're set on concrete and other people might no, be set you, on it too. Know, I don't I'm know. Not, I'm look, the, part, of the, part of what we do, in my opinion, is just suss out the issues. Yeah. And, and half the time when I bring stuff up, maybe I'm for it, maybe I'm against it. Yeah, no, that's good. It's just, it's you know, to me, to it, I think it helps us think about it. But it gets I paid it to do. City I agree. Uh, no, you know, too, is. because ultimately they're, you know, city council has got to, you know, consider just hypothetically, if, for example, we grant the exception, uh, those, those exceptions to the off street parking ordinance mm -hmm. are, uh, still looks like you're subject to approval by the city council. Yeah, it is. So I think part of what we do is just suss out issues pro and con. And I've just been trying, for example, to, to hear a compelling reason yep. that we should grant an exception to the off street parking ordinances. I have no issue with the conditional use. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, once again, try to understand why, why, why the scales tip that we should grant an exception to our off street parking ordinance. I just think aesthetically, right, it's kind of the argument, right? You're coming into Alpine and it's the first thing you see, right, is this and, and it has a, I guess, but you, you won't know, see not a parking lot. That's going to be up around. Mm -hmm. Right 30, away. 30 feet away. I don't think you'll, I don't, I don't know so you'll see the parking lot one way Aren't, aren't the parking yet? spots going to be, they're you? right next to the highway, right? You'll see. Yeah, they're next to the highway. It right is, there. but it has to have a setback of 30 feet, but they're still, it's but, still there. But we're not setting them back 30 feet. You said yeah, right. you have to set it back 30 feet. Yeah, yeah that's part of the, one of the conditions. That's oh, one of the conditions. Oh, okay. to adjust that so they're not, and you can kind of see the, I don't know why I'm pointing to your screen, I have my own, but. You can set 30 foot setback. Some of the parking starts to go into it. So we're just okay. asking as a condition that they back that up to beat that 30 foot setback. Okay. Because so, so, yeah, so you don't want a parking lot. Your, your point thing. then is is similar to Jane's, which is just that look, there's kind of more of a little country aesthetic. To, I mean, to, I get to it. This temporary yeah, use, I, even though it's five to six months, rather than having a paved parking lot with lighting. Yeah, I mean, I, th I can see that point. I, I, I see the point, you know. I, yeah, and, and, and I'm honestly, on the I, mean, fence, I see that I see the too. point, yeah. I do, I do so, just because I, it, because, look, they're here because it's popular and it's profitable. Mm -hmm. Great, good for them, good for the citizens of Alpine, everybody likes it. Um, there's gonna be a lot of cars, you know, in it. Um, you know, I, I suppose people can, I suppose people can, Mm -hmm. Figure out the parking. So, yeah. well, it, it, I, I, you know, I don't, I, I I know. Know, that, I, I don't the, know that it's going to be a, a you know, I 15 traffic yeah. jam. You know, either way, people are, you know, and that's why proficient. I'd just love to have the ability to go back in a year and be like, hey, you know what? This is kind of a, we made the wrong choice. It should have been paved if we have the ability to do that. Oh, you do have that ability. Yeah. So, I mean, it's part of the, it's, it's one of the criteria in the conditional use permit. So any conditional use permit we have, if it's operating and we're seeing that it's not meeting the criteria that it needs to meet, we can go back on it and talk to them about it. Can anybody think of the circumstances that we would say it's not working, we need to pave it? Um, yeah, if it was muddy and they're tracking mud out on the road, right, good point. that would be a violation of our stormwater ordinance. Falling, unsafe. Yeah. So that's going to happen on the first rainy day, isn't it? Not, yeah, not if they have gravel and plenty bark. of gravel and bark. But it, it, Here's something I think that you should think about is um, Ken is saying that the country feel over at the current parking is dirt and gravel in the country feel, I agree, but nobody's parking there, but they're parking on asphalt. And then when you look at the wedding venue, 
they swore up and down that they had separate parking, but you can't make someone park in the designated parking. They park all over the street. And then when the snow ACES moved over to Paula's parking lot, people are parking all up and down the street. It's human nature. It's easy in and out. I park my car on the street. I run in and get what I want and easy access out. So I think you need to plan on having people park on Bateman Lane. Yeah, because if it's legal to park on your street, you can't stop someone from parking there. Right, but I'm confused, Jane, because you're saying you want it painted red, but then you're saying- No, you're... I want the highway painted red, Alpine Highway. Oh, okay, I, in my notes Lane. I had that you want I'm Bateman I'm sorry, Lane. no, I don't want Bateman Lane painted red. That's great, that's public parking. It's their frontage, <laughs> people can park on it. What I want painted red is Bateman or, or Alpine Highway because then they don't have to worry about enforcing it and neither do we. If it's painted red, it's marked as no parking and we can give but have the police go give tickets on it. We have no power, we, we have no power to require that or make that a condition. We can ask them to reach out to the state and get permission to paint it red. You well, should do like, we'll give you a half like state, state some peach thing, right. park it in the yeah. right spot, pass yeah, the, the word. state could, the I mean, state could choose to not grant it, but then in that You've case, then it. we have nothing. You guys, you but they, they can it. post no parking crazy. signs on their property. On their yeah, property, but, but, also it's, they but it's crazy good, right? It's a good thing. If this continues to be a danger, or the first time somebody gets hit, injured, or killed on that, then you're probably not gonna have your conditional use permit. Right, so if it stays bad enough, they might have to post an employee out there. I mean, there are ways around it. Like if the if Naughton Pine wanted to, they could post somebody at the front there and say, park here for the reception. I mean, I'm, there are solutions. Yeah, I, I'm just saying that I think that, that the applicants are going to understand what the city concerns are. Sure. So we don't have any ability to go and paint those curbs red or put no parking signs in the parking strips. Right. But, but they do. But I think they're going to understand that we have a concern about residents parking along Alpine Highway right. and the continued use of that conditional use permit. Depends on it. it um, mm -hmm. Or at least extending it or not mm -hmm. revoking it mm -hmm. is going to be conditional on resolving the, the, the traffic safety hazard that we've experienced over the last couple of summers. Yep. And that can be, that can be our... I don't know that you can make, I don't know that you can make it a condition. I just think well, it's an understanding that the applicants are going to have. Yes, but you could also make it a condition that they request that the state allows them to paint it red and if denied that no parking signs are placed on their property. So, you know, you could put something like that in that they can they can request and if they say yes, they can do it. If they say no, then you can have in your condition that they post no parking signs along their property along Alpine Highway. Okay. Um, <clears throat> all right, should we move this along? I'm willing to make a motion. A, a, a quick point yep. here. Marla brought up something that, that got me thinking. Um, I wonder if like a paved parking lot does kind of invite people to park up there more. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's like, it makes a statement. I mean, it really does, does. kind of make a statement like, hey, mm -hmm. park here, you yeah. know? Yep. I didn't really think about that point. But. Good point. Anyway. Well, like she said, they like parking where the, where something's paved. That's a good point. Well, it says, it says dirt, it's in my mind, it seems mm. a little more optional, you know? Mm. I don't know. Yep. But if it's paved, it kind of, mm -hmm. well, that's a point. <laughs> anyway. Okay, right. well, should okay. I make a stab at a motion? <laughs> sure. Okay. Uh, if you want to. What is that? I wanted to. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Uh, I move to approve the conditional use Recommend permit. approval. What's that? Nope, nope. Oh, so on this one, you're the approval authority. So you'll approve that, and then we would just recommend in your motion that you talk about, as you see in the staff recommendations, the off-street parking exceptions for paving and providing lighting for the parking lot are subject to approval by the city council as required in development. Okay, so Alpine the development exception code. is a recommendation. recommendation, but the approval is a granted. Yep. Okay. Mud. May I proceed? Good luck, proceed. Alan. We're in for you. <laughs> okay. Sir McDonald. Yeah, you, you may. I, I, I'm not even sure that because I, I forgot to bring something to write with. So I'm, I, if I, if we need I've to. I've got my list here. I'll, John, I'll take John's them off. John's got a list. He can correct you if okay. you miss any All of right. them. Well, right now I'm just going to kind of go off the bullet points that are, that are you know, provided by staff. So um, <clears throat> I move to approve. 
John, you going to interrupt me again? No, you're good. Oh, all right. No, but it, going, but it right. rhymed. It rhymed, rhymed so keep going. <laughs> Sorry, all, right, it's all, right. Right. all right, Marla, I'm starting over. To okay. uh, strike that last sentence. <laughs> I move to approve the conditional use permit for a produce stand at 645 South Alpine Highway with the following conditions. One, the off-street standard exceptions for paving and providing lighting for the parking lot uh, are subject to approval by the city council as required in DCA 3.24.040. In other words, we are granting applicants request for an exception uh, to the off-street parking ordinance. Two, no portion of the setback area adjacent to Alpine Highway or Bateman Lane be used for off-street parking purposes unless approved by the Gateway Historic District and the Alpine City Council. Three, the applicant install signage on their property, not allowing parking on Alpine Highway uh, and directing traffic to the parking lot. Uh, and the Planning Commission would add a recommendation to the applicants that they meet and confer with UDOT uh, about <clears throat> either painting the curbing along the Alpine Highway red for no parking uh, and or receiving permission or asking the state to put no parking signs uh, in the parking strip subject to further direction from city council. Can I even do that because of the aesthetic issues of signage in the parking strips? You can say whatever you want. I can. Um, all right, did I miss anything, John, on your... Um, did you, did you, did you want to re refer to hours of operation dawn to dusk or months, spring to fall? Uh, yeah, yeah, let me add that. So, um, I will also add uh, a couple of additional points. Uh, number four would be that the hours of operation are dawn to dusk. And uh, finally, number five, that, what was number five, John? Operate spring to fall. Oh, mm -hmm. that, uh. Uh, that the months of operation or seasons of operation for this conditional use be from uh, no earlier than the first day of spring and no later than the last day of fall. Okay, I have two other things. Um, That's way early. Month, last Monday. Yeah, <laughs> 21st of March. Actually, that's uh, Do we want to add any requirement of, on the removal or relocation of the green shack? Mm, that's a good question. Let's have, we have a motion. Let's have a second on it and then we can discuss and amend it. Okay. Would that be okay? So we have a motion by Alan McDonald. Do we have a second? Could you repeat that, Alan? <laughs> <laughs> no, Marla can read it, but just yeah, <laughs> not repeat it. Do we have a second? Uh, I'll second A it. second yeah. by Troy Slade. Okay, so we can discuss the motion now and choose to add to it. I, I suggest that we say June through October rather than the first day of spring. Well, you can't say the last day. You can't say fall because they've got a lot of stuff coming in. It's still in October, okay? The last day of October. You guys function in November? November. Is it September 21st, the last day of fall? It depends on Mother Nature. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so you, you, can, okay. you, could, you could say spring to fall, first day of spring, yeah. and last day of okay. fall. And some years, like this year, they're probably like, they're not going to open up. Could if we it's say not commercially reasonable yeah. to do so? No, I guess I mean, we could if, say during the growing warm season. spring they may. Okay. If we, so I mean it's it's all right. They're they're, they're still going to I mean they're it's they're merchants they're businessmen they're going to open up yeah, when so it's viable. You, open up. Your motion has spring to okay. spring through fall. So I think it's the first day of spring to the last day of fall. So that would put us March twentieth to December twentieth. Yeah, so just roughly it's roughly. I mean there's a few days here and there, but. December 20th? Right, but if it's a really cold spring, they probably won't open. If it's really early winter, they're not going to be standing up there freezing their fingertips it, and, off. And with the hours of operation, it gets dark. It, you know, it feels like 4 o'clock in the fall going into the winter. So. Okay. So, wow. And then, and then the next point was, do you want to mention that, I mean, it doesn't matter about, about moving the green building, we just don't want them. I guess it doesn't really matter. 
the long walk back. But the building will oh, you're not moving be it. Where it, is. it yeah. Because okay, so the parking lot's clear. Yeah. Walk back to the same so temporarily. we're just saying. So, all right. So, I, so at the point, I mean, just does it need just to be where stated? Where we are procedurally, right? We've had a motion and a second, mm -hmm. and so now just we're discussing if we want to add anything to it. To, and, right. right. Is, is, so at this point, is the movement of the amendment, building necessary? Somebody's got to offer an amendment. Right. So we're just asking: Is listing the movement of the building a necessary amendment? I don't think it is because I don't think so. it, it what they if, can't what, function without parking. What about parking ensuring that the improvements to Bateman Lane be uh, concluded before commencement of operations? They won't be able to install or do any of their improvements without Bateman Lane going in because that's where their entrance to their parking lot comes from. So mm -hmm. I don't know that that's Redundant. completely necessary. Okay. Yeah. Um, is it okay for them to open operations though before that's finished? So say that for whatever reason this gets delayed and they start, want to start selling, I'm not saying they're gonna do this, but so what I think you're saying is do we need to stipulate that that's up to you guys. I would say you need to say you can't. The, the business. You gotta have sufficient yeah. parking to have your business. Yeah, correct. you can't open until it's, until the improvements to the lane and the parking lot are complete. So we don't need it. Okay, I will move to amend the motion to include the following language prior to operations all improvements to Bateman Lane and the parking lot need to be completed do you accept the amendment? Accept the amendment okay so an amendment was suggested by John McKay and accepted by Alan McDonald okay Marla do you need any clarification on that um, motion I mean, I'm going to have a little bit of cleaning up to do here, but I think I've got. I think you got it. Pretty much here. Do you want me to read it back? Sure. Go ahead. No, I don't want to hear my but let's, <laughs> We do. We want it. We want it here. <laughs> Planning Commission member Alan McDonald moved to approve the conditional use permit for a produce stand, 645 South Alpine Highway, with the following conditions: off street park, off street standards for parking and lighting are subject to city county council approval no portion of the setback area will have parking applicant to install signage on their property to not allow parking on alpine highway meet with UDOT to paint curb or receive permission to put up no parking signs in the parking strip hours of operation are from dawn to dusk season of operation is first day of spring to last day of fall you know that's 10 months of the year so it's pretty much yearly right and I business know, can't open until long. improvements on Bateman lane and the parking lot are complete Okay, I think that's good. And to Marla's point, <laughs> that's why I was wondering if we should reword it to say the growing season or something shorter because that is yeah, hitting 10 I, months I of the I year. To say that, that but it doesn't it, matter. They're, gonna, they're not going to open unless it's gonna open later and close sooner right. because their business just isn't going to And they have to, it's not a fruit stand if they start selling other things or yeah. Christmas gifts out of it during December and things like that. Then it's no longer a fruit stand use. I will add that I think Marla made me sound better than I was. It's not, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Okay. Yeah. I was tapping my little fingers off as fast as they could go. You did great. I know. Okay. Any other questions about the motion or discussion on the motion? Okay. All in favor of this motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. No nays. It passes unanimously. On to City Council Ooh. with you. Good luck, guys. Thank you. It's always a great discussion when you guys come in. And just put on your little marquee. No problem. I know. That's your best signage. I'm looking at Mr. Every, Bird. I'm looking every Do your month. parents live in what Alpine too? No? Okay. Nothing either. Well, no, you're from up. Oh, that's right. You're the Heber guy. That's what you do, is you keep up with You're that You're the Heber science. guy. Wait, I know, are you, are you an engineer? Yes. Did you do Victory Ranch? Was it, were you the person I was visiting with about Victory Ranch? So my, remember, my family's the one who owns Lemons Grove. Oh, okay. I know, somewhere I met you and we were talking about fly fishing and my husband getting kicked off Victory Ranch's portion of the Provo River. Yeah, I know. I knew I'd seen you before somewhere. I don't know where we met. 
I hope but I remember Marla talking to you because you said you were riding around in the truck off. with Ruth and Phil <laughs> discussing Victory Ranch and everything. Ah, oh, funny. My brother, my brother bought their house. So my brother lives there in their house. Okay. Don't, don't put any of that on the notes. I was going to say, I think we need to put that in the record okay, that Jane's husband record. got kicked yeah. off of Victory Talk to Marla on the way out. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I knew I had seen him. I'm like, how do I know him? Okay, sorry. Back to the meeting. See, when you get up into those small towns like Heber, Daniel, and Francis, you start to know everybody. You know, you worked for Francis City. Okay, well, we'll we won't get off on Victory Ranch. I was never kicked off Victory, Victory Ranch for fishing. Well, right, so. our property is right in the middle of Victory Ranch. They own all of Provo River except uh -huh. our property. So if we fish off of our property, I swear they have somebody in a helicopter or something spying down there, and they come running down the mountain and kick us off. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me. They do. Okay. <laughs> Moving on, okay. Yeah, Alan. No. Okay, moving on. No, I think it was a. a I will next time. I, Door you, dash. I'm, I'm gonna you call. and your sussing. I'm going to call. Uh, well, we're just okay. getting started. We're just getting started. Okay, moving on. Let's move on. Buckle up. Um, we're moving on to an ordinance um, modification, I believe. Um, public hearing on the code amendment to section 3.19.070 regarding the density standards in the assisted living and nursing care overlay zone. Let's take a look at this. This is going to be a good one. It is a public hearing. Please don't let me forget. Okay, so do you want to go ahead and introduce that and we'll have a discussion and then a public hearing and more discussion. <laughs> yeah, so this one, uh, we received a request uh, to review the standards in the assisted uh, living and nursing care overlay zone on the overall density standards. Um, this is, again, and just, just so I don't forget, legislative decision. So where the last one was administrative, we were just applying the law. This one, it's administrative or legislative because we're, we're essentially re rewriting law potentially on this that would apply. So again, we received this request to, to look at this, to uh, look at ways to potentially reduce the overall density requirements in this zoning. Um, right now, the current density in this zone allows for one resident for every 1,000 square feet of lot area. Um, it does have a minimum. You have to have at least two acres to, to apply for this. And, and as we've discussed previously, that it has to um, be in the business commercial uh, is the underlining zone. So it is, it is limited in that way. Um, so minimum of two acres, maximum of 10 that they could have. So uh, really if someone came in for this, for this zone change request, they could have up to, from anywhere between 87 to 435 residents, depending on that lot size. That's obviously the two acre to the 10 acre. Can I ask um, you a question at yes. that point? Yes. I thought I heard in city council them saying that there was a maximum of five acres, so it was also an exception to allow the request for seven acres, and I didn't think that that was the case. Yeah, so it can go up to 10 acres. Okay, so um, that was a misunderstanding on their part. Yeah, so, okay. so yeah, Thank you. yeah, so it can go up to 10 acres. Um, you guys would obviously have to look at that and say, yes, we're okay with that. Sure, okay, I just wanted to make sure that, four or five. Yeah. Yeah, that, that yeah. we hadn't missed some exception yeah. we were supposed nope. to grant, because, do you remember hearing that too? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay, thank you, I yeah. just want to clarify that. Yeah. Thank you. And again, these are these are good to go over this, because in the future we can look at it and say, right. you know, this is, uh, I've been told we get one of these about once every 10 to 15 years, so okay. in, in 10 or 15 years we'll remember we'll look at this, it again. hopefully, when we're all still here. Um, <laughs> Again, uh, 87 to 435. This zone just goes off uh, residents. It doesn't have a, in most other zones, it's, you know, one unit per acre, one per half acre, one, um, one unit. Um, this one goes off residents. Um, so there's no, no dwelling or no uh, unit limitation on this. You can't say you can only have so many, so many units. It, it's just squarely based off residents. Just to compare, whoops, went too far. Just to compare off this too, so we, we just took some different um, lot sizes, uh, two, to, two to 10, and obviously we skipped, skipped a few in there just to, um, for mm -hmm. simplicity reasons. But um, 
we took these different standards. These are no way as it has to be 2,000 square feet per resident or it has to be three. These are just some, just to kind of give us some ballpark numbers okay. um, of, of what, what it could be in there. So we took, um, obviously the two acres is roughly 8, 87,120 square feet. So then we, we did the math, you could get about 87 residents uh, with the current standard, if we went to 2,000, it would be about 43, and if you went to 3,000, it'd be about 29. Mm -hmm. um, just to explain this table, really for my own self, but I also threw in a single family dwelling. So if, if somebody came in and in a business commercial, you could get one lot per 10,000 square feet, or one, one unit per 10,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. So just to kind of compare what we're looking at there, and then we took the average household size from the latest census, which is about 3.67 people. Mm -hmm. So that's how we got to those numbers. Okay. Um, if you're looking at this, so when it, when it comes to resident, or when it comes to uh, density dwelling units, uh, if it turns out to be, you know, they could get, you know, 10.3 units per, per this, whatever project it is, we would round that down to 10. So we, we rounded down on some of these um, just to, make it so it would be as, as realistic as, as possible on those. So those are just some of the, the density standards that we could potentially be looking at. Now, Alan and I had a conversation earlier about this. Um, if you do come out and you say, you know what, we, we're not comfortable with you know, 2,000 or 3,000, maybe let's do 1,500 or 1,200 or Jed's here. Engineers are really good at math, so he can do this on the fly in his head, he told me. So mm -hmm. no, but we, we can obviously adjust these. These were, again, just to give us some ballpark uh, numbers on these. Um, we've also looked at different uh, options and standards for the maximum number of dwelling units allowed in these. Uh, this, again, assisted living nursing care overlay zone. We also have a senior housing overlay zone, which is more of the, you know, 55 plus, you get two dwelling units per, you know, kind of a, a townhouse looking thing with those. Um, with those, you are, I think I have it in here. Um, you get a max of, I think it's eight per acre with no more than 32 units. Mm -hmm. um, so we could, we could look at doing something similar like that just for, to make it kind of uniform or, or different things there. We've also looked at basing it off the population and we'll, we'll go over these in the different options that we've had. <coughs> and again, just, just to start a conversation and kind of go, mm -hmm. go that way as well. But um, we could also do it, you know, if, if you get a, a 200 residents is your, is your max you could get, you, you could have a max of 100 dwelling units or you could, you know, different, different options to look at there. So, um, yeah, and, and we can go over that too. This is a public hearing, um, so we'll, we'll have to do that. It's been noticed and, and all the fun stuff was done uh, to make sure that people knew about this. Uh, and then our, our recommendation is the same on all legislative ones that uh, we need to base it off the vision of the general plan and the, the standards and, and different policies in our, in our code to, to approve or deny. So we've got those sample motions in there. Um, and then this is, Again, this is just kind of a base for us to get started on this. We've looked around at kind of what other communities do. Um, everyone does this a little differently. Some treat it as, as kind of how, how we've done it to where, uh, you know, it's based off of a, almost like an apartment complex. You get X amount of units per acre. Some do it kind of how we do per, per resident. So um, I don't know if there's how do a, we How do we compare to the... As far as it, it as varies as well. from different community to community, as far as overall numbers and mm -hmm. stuff like that, it varies just depending on, on what community you're looking at, but um, pretty, pretty similar. Uh, again, it just depends on. At, at 1,000, we're similar? Yeah, just overall, overall numbers, yeah. And, and a, lot of them, a lot of them do units, not necessarily residents. So we're, like I said, it's all, a lot of the stuff is, was, was done based on what we thought would be best for Alpine or what you know, Highland thinks will work for Highland and, and different things there. So uh, just, just take that into consideration. Ryan, can you just yes. define for me yep. real quick what, like, in these options, options one, two, and three. Yeah. For example, in our, our current language, we just have uh, our current ordinance yep. basically just says that um, the total number of residents permitted in an assisted living, congregate living, or nursing care project mm -hmm. shall be one resident per thousand square feet of lot area. Mm -hmm. But in options one, two, and three, we, we carry over that language except with increases of, of the you know, resident per square foot. Mm -hmm. but, there's, but there's additional language in, for example, the maximum dwelling in option one, the maximum dwelling units per project shall not exceed eight units per acre 
Option two is phrased a little differently. The maximum dwelling units shall not exceed one third of the number of total residents. By maximum dwelling units, is is a dwelling unit an apartment, or is a dwelling unit a, a Build. yeah. building? So it would be like an apartment, like an apartment would okay, be considered a dwelling. Okay, so you could have a building with ten apartments in it. Those are ten building. Yeah, units. that would be ten those are units. dwelling units. Yep. Dwelling yep. Units. Okay. And and I apologize if you look at option one, everything from here down has been added. I don't know why that didn't come out green. That's fine. But that's been added just to, and that's what we have in the senior housing overlay zone. Um, mm -hmm. So that should be green, that's been added. So sorry for that, but um, just some different options to look at. And again, these aren't, there's no sacred cows here. If, if we feel like, you know, let's reword this differently, we can do that if we, if we wanna, as is, that's fine too. But that's kind of our report. Uh, happy to take any questions or Is comments. there any more below this? No. I think we go into the minutes. So a um, couple questions I have. The, this was put forth by whom? Ryan? I've had several on the city council and the mayor. The so city council and mayor have requested this be looked at, okay. Yep. Um, and That wasn't a Jed thing. No. <laughs> Oh, okay. okay. It, it was Jed. Jed's and, got, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, because, you know, obviously I think this is probably one of the first of this type of applications we've had. And so the density hadn't really been considered before, I don't think. I don't know when this was actually made. How long ago was this ordinance last modified? Two thousand eight. It looks like was when the last time it was modified. At least the section I'm looking at. Hmm. Two thousand three was before that. Hmm. Interesting. And that might not necessarily be the actual density. It could be anything in that. Right. It could have been in anything that. in that section. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and open the public hearing. So public hearing is open. If anyone would like to comment on this potential ordinance change. Thank you for that view. We will close the public hearing and the planning commission will discuss. Um, I think that the density was much higher allowed than we expected it to be as a city when this application came in. And I think that is something that, like you said, the city, um, council and mayor looked at and felt like that high of a density does not match the city's master plan. So, okay. Which is why they're putting this forth. So this is what, let's, that's, that's a good segue. This is what the city's general plan says, right? So just so mm -hmm. we, we understand what we're looking at, right? So we have the Gateway Historic District, mm -hmm. as we all know, right up and down Main Street. Um, and, and we allow for higher density housing and also commercial uses. Mm -hmm. Well, we also, then we have an overlay zone. We have two overlay zones, the senior housing overlay zone. Mm -hmm. And we also have the assisted living and nursing care overlay zone. Yep. And, and I think that will become important and I'll, I'll touch on that briefly. So 3.3 of the general plan. We think this is, Ryan, this is a general plan, right? Yeah, yeah, from? Okay. Um, okay. The senior housing overlay zone is to provide for increased land use flexibility and specialized types of senior housing that recognizes and accommodates varied housing needs and desires of the community's senior housing population while promoting independence and a high quality of life. So a little more independent type living, you've got your own apartment, you can take care of yourself, you just don't want to have a big house, a big yard. You know that that like the duplex, had aging like Montadella. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. senior housing overlay. That's fifty-five and older. Yeah. That's senior housing. That's yeah. That's good. Okay. That that so is so Montadella is what, senior what housing. Is, what's River Meadows? Assisted living. Senior is assist. Go ahead. Yeah. Jed, Jed's saying it's senior. He. I'm just saying Jed because he's been here when it was around. I'm. So tell <laughs> us what River Meadows housing. is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Montadella is senior housing. Right. But what about River Meadows? It is also senior housing with, I believe, some assisted, assisted living. living. Yeah, it's a combination okay. of both. So then 3.4, and we can read it there. The assisted living and nursing care overlay zone is to provide for increased land use flexibility to assure that health and human services are appropriately located in the community to meet the needs of aging residents. So I only, I only read that to say that, that basically we have in our general plan the need and the desire mm -hmm. to accommodate 
both types of that as, as you know, as mm -hmm. some of us on this commission are, are older than others, mostly pointing at myself. Mm -hmm. I think I have the most gray hair. Maybe Troy has as much gray hair as I. Hey, I'm just. <laughs> yeah. So, He's the so obviously, one look, here. We, we, in Alpine, I think we have a desire within the city to be able to accommodate kind of independent living, senior housing, but also as those needs progress and, and seniors become more to mm -hmm. the assisted living and even nursing care. Mm -hmm. And so it's just, I mean, I'm not an expert in that field, but obviously, and, and, it, and we all learned about this you know, quite a bit over the last couple of months, right, is independent living, lower density, more kind of you know, apartment style, I still take care of myself, I still cook, I still, you know, et cetera. As, as needs progress and you become more into the assisted living and even then the nursing type care, then obviously you're, you're, you're going to have a higher density mm -hmm. for that use yep. than, than you have in the, the senior housing overlay. And so in our general plan, we want to accommodate that. And the, the, the only thing that I don't understand, Ryan, and you did a good job laying this out, is I, I just, I don't understand at all, and I'd almost feel like I would need some guidance from a, a developer, somebody who's an expert in developing and building and having a, a commercially viable right. building and project to accommodate assisted living and nursing care overlay zone. So for example, if we ask somebody like that, um, hey, here's our original language, would you have a, you know, would, would it be commercially viable for you to come in and build mm -hmm. an assisted living and nursing, you know, assisted living nursing right. care building? If They'd probably change, say yes. If right? you change the language to the least dense language, then they'll say, well, no one can do that. Right, right. It's so that's, not that's, even that's a viable business right. anymore. That's what I just don't know, right? Is okay. at what point in option one, two, or three, do we even do, do, do yep. we cut out the opportunity for anybody to come in and build an assisted living impossible. facility? Mm -hmm. yeah. And I I just don't know the answer to that. I, so I mean yeah. I'm not even sure how That's how to vote on these options because we clearly want to provide for that, mm -hmm. um, but I, I, I don't I don't know what that number would be. Mm -hmm. well, and I don't necessarily think like you know if you stack a lot more assisted living people in nursing type people if it's going to require that much more do you know what i'm saying like i don't think the ratio there of people to take care of them is necessarily that well you know I, what i mean yeah well i don't know i mean it's just from, from what i've seen and this just this is just with an aging mother and yeah. an aging in-law right and looking at their options i i you know my 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 mom is now 85 i'll just go from personal experience she just, she, you know, my dad died a long time ago. And so, you know, she stayed in that house for a period of time. It just got to be too much. Then she kind of moved into a senior, you know, kind of 55 plus, mm -hmm. her own home. Uh, it's Arizona, so there's no snow removal, but her own home. They, they comb the cactus or rake the gravel or whatever they do, you know, there. But she didn't have to take care of anything. Mm -hmm. um, but, 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 that got, but that got to be a little too much. She didn't want to cook for herself, et cetera. So now she's moved into an, you know, more of an assisted living facility that can become either hospice or kind of memory care, mm -hmm. depending on your needs. Mm -hmm. Now, what I noticed is, right, is, is that in, you know, in her 55 plus, hey, she had her own home. When she moved into more of kind of a, you know, next one, more of a senior housing, it was, it was like, oh, hey, more of a connected home, a mm -hmm. little small thing, but there was right there a cafeteria that she could walk across the street and go to, kind of like River Meadows. Mm -hmm. But now that she's 85 in, a, in assisted living, you get much more of, for lack of a better term, the big box mm -hmm. experience, right? It looks more like an apartment building. Mm -hmm. And and I think that, and my guess is that, and, and again, there's like two or three different food options in there. There's PT, there's, there's a, a game room, there's a movie room, there's the, the hair salon. Yeah. I mean, they have all the things in there, right? And mm -hmm. so that, because the residents are mostly on walkers and other things, confined, you kind of have to have everything real close. They're confined to that area, confined. so you have so to, to do meet that their efficiently, there. you have a much bigger mm -hmm. building, and that really is what an assisted yeah. living right. building is. Mm -hmm. And that became part of the issue, right, is, is, is you know, we had somebody bring up, you know, concept to us. So, you know, once again, I, I, I guess the struggle is 
assisted living is by its nature going to be more of a big block building. Have we decided, you know, I mean, is and we that, say is that, that we want it in the general plan. Yeah, we say plan. we want it, yeah. but, right. but no, any I developer agree. is going to tell you well, that's what it is. Yep. Right. And so we say we want it, but... But at but, what but size? And, 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 and at what point is, is this, you know, at what point does it have to, it's got to be a certain size to be financially, yeah. well, I think, to be feasible. Yeah. So I, think, I don't even know what that is. Mm, yeah. I think that we what they do. refer back to in city council, I, and I can see their point, is that River Meadows shows that something on a much smaller scale is more, is viable, and it still looked like it fit better in the community. Um, and I think that was, they felt like there was a, another way of doing this that didn't, they felt like this didn't. Except I think people would tell you that in River Meadows, there's very few actual assisted living mm -hmm. nursing mm -hmm. care. Yeah. Almost everybody at a certain it's point just a small has amount. to leave their community in River Meadows yeah. and go to Highland right. Glen, mm -hmm. the Charleston, yep. Coventry or whatever the one is down in Lehigh. Right, there really is not an assisted living I agree. facility nursing type care facility in alpine and and i agree and i just i just want and i'm not sure we'd be able to have i mean at w which one of these options would at least allow us to have that at the density that mm -hmm. just barely plus maybe a little bit allows it to be a financially viable um, development without having something that is just a big overwhelming apartment block. And I just don't, I just really don't know. I mean, I see the reason for um, city council or the mayor asking us to take a look at this, mm -hmm. but I'm just throwing, blindly throwing a dart. Right, really without any information. I, 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 how can we make it? I, I don't know. Well, we yeah, can I, request I, I more think. information. We don't have to make a decision until we have yeah, more information. Much. Yeah, and, and we could, I don't, Jed talked about maybe potentially looking at doing some kind of study or, or mm -hmm looking at different studies, that, that's always an option too. Um, we could also, in this section of the code, the 3.19, it defines uh, an assisted living, a congregate living, and I don't remember what the third one is, mm -hmm. but there's different. We could also look at saying, you know, for if it's a congregate living, kind of what we've been talking about, even in this zone, it's gotta meet the standards of the assisted, or the nursing, or the, mm -hmm. excuse me, the senior housing zone, yeah. which is the four per acre. And then leave if it qualifies for the what defi is defined as an assisted living, then it could be one that one right. per one thousand yeah. or just kind of I better. Think the congregate it. living was one of the biggest concerns. Yeah. Is that yeah. Basically, you're if you have congregate living at the density that was allowed, it's it's yeah. really apartment. Yeah. So, so, um, so yeah. So I guess I would comment, and then I'll I'll shut up because I think everybody heard mm -hmm. enough from me tonight. It's mm -hmm. like literally, I would really like to know like what because because I, I think we can all agree we probably need. Like, like, something. like, we need something. It mm -hmm. would be great it, if somebody wanted to come in and there was the right parcel of property to do this in Alpine. Then, what's like, what's kind of the next step from River Meadows, where our elderly in Alpine mm -hmm. could could go live and not necessarily leave? Because, because like I'll just say with my in-laws, right? They live up on Hillside Circle in that little PRD area. Mm -hmm. um, it's just in their heads that that. I've just lived in Alpine for 40 years and I'm yeah. dying in Alpine. Mm -hmm. And so to say, oh, we have this nice place in Highland. I'm not going to Highland. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was really great when Lehigh. I'm not going to Lehigh. It's mm -hmm. true. So it's just, true. okay, so, you know, we got round the clock caregivers because yeah. it's just, I'm not, you know, and again, that's a little bit city. extreme. Yeah. But, I, but I just really wonder, yeah. like, what what's what's the right option where we get something that's a, that's a little more viable for mm -hmm. an assisted living nursing care mm -hmm. facility, but that's not going to promote 300 people in right. a big old mm -hmm. Costco looking building. Yeah. You know, I, and I don't know what that rate, I don't, I don't know what that is. Maybe, maybe somebody has some insights in that. Well, I don't know. Has our developer, that was one of my things. They were great people, but a developer is different than someone that's going to run something like this. Like Greg Neal, he's the one that started mm -hmm. he's the Ashford. He's gone to school and gotten his education in elder care. He was mm -hmm. big on this aging in place. But when he got into it, I mean, he started out with like. Can you talk in your microphone, Susan? Mm -hmm. Thanks. Sorry. Started out with, I was only telling them. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Can't he started be on the out with these just few years. But he was on the premise all the time, and he then had plans to either have memory care. Well, he went with memory care first and then added on to the assisted living because the people are trying to come visit their loved ones and didn't want to. It was nice for them to live close by. 
Mm -hmm. The problem we get is the next step is that skilled nursing. Mm -hmm. And you have, you have, I mean, everybody wants to stay in assisted living. I mean, even the poor older people are like, I don't want to go to skilled, and a lot of them don't even have the wherewithal at that point. Yeah, no. But skilled nursing is, that's a really sad, I mean, that's hospice, you know, of course, it's nice to have, be able to stay and age in place and, and maybe die in some of those circumstances that are, you feel you're like at home. But once you get to skilled care, you're really sick and you're, but it's, it's a whole different type of care. Mm -hmm. So that was my thing is, are they prepared to, to do, okay, you have the 55, that's great, active, then you go to a little less independent, but then you go to completely, mm -hmm. I mean, you're in, you're totally, you're in you never leave the room. Yeah. But so we're, that we're being asked to create density standards that think, spans well, that all three of those categories, right? Mm -hmm. I don't think that's appropriate. Yeah. I think they're, yeah. I think they're apples and oranges. Well, most people will have, well, if you're Well, we could office, change that though. That's what he's yeah, saying is this yeah. is open. Whatever we yeah. want to do, we don't yeah. need to and, use And again, this. we, we just use these options as kind of, as a starting point to kind of get us going to see what, mm -hmm. what we can do. So I have a question for everyone. <coughs> so what, what are the pieces of information you think that you need to be able to do this? So I think what, we all agree that we need more information, um, but I think we need to come up with what we want, you know, Ryan to, to get for us. And so if we could list out the things, the pieces of information we feel like we are lacking what would they be? I want to know how progressive they see. I mean, well, I not a, this pretend this like this is not an applicant, though, at this point. We're not talking about an applicant. We're talking about our ordinance. So we're talking about. You need enough space. Economically. Right. right. So, like you, so you need to list out those categories. And are you saying we need to add another category of nursing, uh, skilled nursing care to the end that that's not covered in assisted living? I, I kind of tend to agree with John that I think it's just look what's what kind of density is any owner or operator of mm -hmm. an assisted living and skilled nursing care facility what kind of density are they going to need, require are they going to require mm -hmm. for, for that even to be a financially okay. viable project mm -hmm. and I don't I don't know that number so yeah could, so that, could we get some research on what a minimum density is for an assisted living and a yeah. all the different levels to be economically viable yeah and, and we will we'll do our best because it's going to vary from no one's nobody no one's i know has done a study that. just for alpine yeah. right so we can we can do one and that's building a general, materials change yeah, and, and it, all and i'm sure hourly wages to, change and yeah. all of those things yeah. but we could get a range yeah maybe it, it, and from two years ago from today is going to be probably completely and i don't i don't yeah. follow the senior living housing market very much but like i'm you sure you could it's still even direct a, us to some articles things about cost yeah. of food wages everything all, all, the only thing that changes is how much the residents mm -hmm. pay for where they are none of that changes My, what what i mean the, what the, proper the cost would go is. down per resident depending on how many residents you had right because mm -hmm. more residents Your probably cheaper is. the cost probably so so maybe you could get us some figures like that, right? Like, I, I, like I read an article online that suggested that 80 to 100 is the target size to be financially viable okay. for assisted living. They also suggested that a budget of somewhere around 120 to 140 thousand dollars per bed mm -hmm. is kind of what what the expense is going to be. Will but, you share that article did we with send us? That to I, me, John? I, I think we I need to that. do some research and John, look into some articles. Because, well, like, right now we've got, right, it, it, like, the residents per 1,000 square, like, 80 to Per building. Like, like, how does that translate into density? We right? don't. Because well, that, it's a density that, ratio. That's a right? building. Right. So whatever building is created would need to be able to house that number of residents. But we also residents. Can, we can list this differently. This is just one way of listing it. Like, they said they could have so many units per area like we don't have to tie it down to square footage per person we could do it in a different way we could do it in a building i don't remember in how a, you in said, a unit in per, a yeah. unit which is kind of the what we do on on every other zone right we don't say you That's can only kind have of different that we have this. 10 people per house right and right. once you have your 11th kid then 
we yeah. send code compliance after you. You know, we don't we don't do that, and this is so it's a little different in, in mm -hmm. everything else that we've done and kind of the standard moving and, forward. And, and do we kind of at the end of the day do we kind of look at hey is this affordable for our citizens right like are they going to pay thirty grand a well, month because there's only ten of them in there? But no one's going to build no one's going to build it if it's not financially viable. Yeah. So. Anything in Alpine yeah, is probably so, going to be a little more. So, so if there were if there were somebody who was an expert in owning and operating, right, a, a assisted living facility, I'd, I'll the question would be the only thing like, is, is that okay? What's like, like if you if you were to read if you were thinking about going into Alpine, for example, mm -hmm. and and we had the the original language, they'd probably say, oh yeah, that would work for us. My guess is that if we said, how about option three? They're like, yeah, that doesn't work for us. Right. I, I mean, they like, they know their business well enough to mm -hmm. say, okay, basically based on land acquisition costs and, and how many people we can put in and what we can charge for rent, how much the infrastructure is, right? Because to some degree, you've got to scale in the sense that you've got to try to put as many people under one roof as you right. can. It, the, the fewer people you have under one roof and the more scattered roofs you have around, mm -hmm. the less efficient it is because mm -hmm. you're not gonna have a central cafeteria. Right. You're not gonna have all these central amenities. You're gonna have nurse, you're gonna have nurse people having to run from building to building to building to building. Mm -hmm. So the, you're, you're gonna, it, it's, it comes down to like, what's, like, it, Alpine probably wants as few residents under one roof as, as we can get. An owner operator probably wants as many under wonder yeah, as he can right. get. What's, what's right. the media? What's the right. midpoint? And I don't have any way to and I don't know that. Maybe a few statistics like how many, how much staff would it take to, to serve this many residents versus this many residents or something like that it may help, you know, because then that's a traffic thing. Because the residents aren't going anywhere, probably. Mm -hmm. Um, one thing I was going to say about talking to people who have local businesses too, they're also going to be a little concerned about the competition. I got definite feel from people that they were like, they don't yeah. want competition. Oh, yeah. I, I was going to, we heard from an operator, right? Yeah. Try to reach out meetings. maybe to some more in like a southern Utah range. Yeah. Or a and so then the other like thing. Okay, yeah, do it. Okay, hey, here's the other thing too is, um, you know, city council and some of the discussion was, well, Alpine doesn't need that. Oh, we have too many in this area. There's already places to go. Like, how does anybody know that? Like, where are they getting from everything I've heard, and I haven't researched it extensively, it's a growing need that will only continue to grow. But the discussions I heard acted like, Oh, it's overbuilt, and we don't need another one, and we'll end up with this, you know. And so, so I listened to that discussion. Uh, yeah, where does any information it, coming basically from? Basically, the, inf the information, the, the mayor made several phone calls to River Met, nearby, yeah, to, River, mm -hmm. to, to, to Operate local nearby. operators. And they had anywhere from a handful to three or four or five vacancies. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the total number of units, that translated into a 90% plus occupancy, occupancy I've always rate. Got those, yeah. To me, it's like, like. That's what like, you're going to have. Right, I mean, it's like. This you, article you suggests that 90%, 90 to 95% occupancy is, is full, full in, this, yeah. in this market. Oh. And, and that it, it, is, right. it is one of the best housing uh, yeah. rates available in anything, in any segment. Interesting, yeah. I, and I we do have an affordable is, housing issue. Yeah. I, I just sent it to everybody. I thought I was responding to something that was just planning commissioners, but it included Thank all you. of city council that's and great. the mayor. <laughs> so okay, everybody great. now knows, has the information. Okay. I, I do think any, any information we find, we should share with each other. I think we should do some research. I think we all need to spend some time on our own. Um, I think we all have the experience. My mother is in a skilled nursing facility right now, recovering from knee surgery, and it is amazing. Oh my heavens, physical therapy twice a day, occupational therapy, the food brought to a room, it is invaluable. I'd like to bring up one item to discuss. Uh, in city council, uh, I think it was a, a citizen brought up the idea that um, that this density issue ought to be uh, focused on buildable areas versus total a mm -hmm. uh, total acreage. Footage. Yeah, that, that uh, was a valid in, point. In, in that particular piece of property, there's a lot of non-buildable area. Um, 
it should not be considered part of the density possibly is what is what they were thought. contending right right um, and I thought that was a valid point to make I think part of it though is we do the same thing with lots mm. because it creates open space mm -hmm. yeah. you know but so it's almost like the PRD trade-off mm -hmm. I, I, I like the fact that we have that open space mm -hmm. and I Me think too. I think by including all the area we encourage more open space mm -hmm. That was, that was an interesting point as well. Um, the other point I thought that was interesting was, are, do, is there any way to restrict the building height or the number of stories? Now, the height of the building was no higher than a home height, yeah. but it was a big co point of contention that there were three levels. Yeah, and it goes to 34 feet, just like it would a standard. I know. How many yeah. houses is that? Yeah. It is. People but hear three stories and they think it's going to be yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, yeah. yeah. To, 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 to me, that was just an absolute clamor, mm -hmm. yeah. like red herring talking point, because yeah. the, the height of the buildings were no higher than no any other. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I, you look at a bunch of two story homes yep. with lockout mm -hmm. basements, from the back side, it's a three story. Right. And yeah. front side, it's. You know, yeah. I think it absolute. was maybe a little bit the aesthetics of the roofing as you come into town. Um, versus, you know, a pitched roof has a little bit more of a homey look to it than the flat roofs has a more of an apartment look to it. Yeah, I just true. wanted to throw that out there as some of the discussion that I heard. Right. Yeah. And, um, and you know, but all those issues, you know, could have been, you know, could, could have been, again, it's going to have I agree. to be a, a, a home could have looked like. Yeah. These, yeah. You, you know, based on these renderings, mm -hmm. um, you know, that, that also you know, set a lot of the citizens, you know, citizens off. So, right, that they looked you know, like a townhouse. It was kind of a flat and, roof as mm -hmm. opposed to yep. like Montdella, right? They've, exactly. They've got the, yeah, they just you know, they prefer the, the homier look or the more residential look, even though it's not residential, it has an appearance of residential. And, and just clarity, this is for all going forward, not necessarily mm -hmm. just because of one, but just a, <laughs> just a point of clarity there. But um, so it sounds like, and just for my own ease of, of moving forward. Um, it sounds like we're okay with the number we have for like a congregate living. I can't remember what the other one's called on there, but the non-assisted living uh, options that you have in this zone, um, maybe we look at referring those back to the same density requirements in the senior housing overlay. The congregate can, living? Yeah, yeah. Maybe. I, the thing is, is if they're adjacent to or part of a building, I don't have a problem with those being slightly more dense than the senior housing, um, but not as dense as the assisted living. Yeah. But that is one thing we could do that is, sounds is appealing, break it up and say is to a, just break it up and say, the congregate living, is, this congregate living is the same as senior housing in density, assisted living has this density, and then if we even want to add a skilled nursing facility with a different density, we could do that. But yes, I do yeah. think, I think tiered, I don't Just think, we, I think the one, one thing point. is yeah. not a good idea. I do yeah. think I it should be broken out. You guys yep. think so too? Okay. Yep. And, I, and I, I think that's one of our biggest flaws we have in our ordinance. I don't think there was issues with, yeah, the necessarily the assisted living. It was just the total, and again, speaking for the all congregate. projects on this, not one yeah. specific, but yeah, just to, I don't think we'd have an issue with a higher assisted living because the impact would, would be so much less, not necessarily but if you're if it's a 55 plus community right. and you're 56 you're still going to be out driving right. at that point it was an apartment complex is their argument is that you're just using this and you're basically building a 55 and over apartment complex yeah. and, and i agree with that we can't actually dictate i mean we can to some degree with, with our ordinance right. we can't dictate you know how people de develop right but i think we would have all liked to see for example a mix of mm -hmm. of 55 plus, right. maybe some sm you know, smaller homes, connected homes, mm -hmm. um, lower, right? And mm -hmm. then, you know, and then maybe a, a again, just a wish list, right? Mm -hmm. But then maybe a, sing a, a more like mm -hmm. a single Assisted building living. with higher density, more people under one roof that was more or less, look, this is your community, you love it. Um, you're you're you ha you're moving from independence to more assisted living. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can you can leave this apartment home um, and then move into more of the congregate mm -hmm. living, assisted living. Yeah. You know, I think if we'd, uh, you know, I think we'd all have liked to see something like that rather right. than two, you know, just, right. just in that particular project. Um, I, mean, I see a project that was a little more, 
a little more varied like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I think one thing that I want to clarify that because this was a zone change and a request for an overlay, it is legislative in nature. And so that's why we were tying those zone changes to the approval of that so we can have a bit of a say in it. It's not just meeting an ordinance. And, it, and so we do have the ability to do that. No, I was gonna say, Jane makes a great point that uh, we talked about earlier, but it is legislative, it's a zone change. So we always have that ripcord of, of, and again, no matter what they do, as long as we have reasons that it wasn't, doesn't meet the general policy and the general plan and vision of the community, we can always deny it. Right. So if one comes up that we feel like doesn't do that, that was, that's always an option yeah. as well. Yeah, which is not. why we didn't want to approve the overlay without a viable plan in front of us. If we approve the overlay, then we are more ordinance driven. It's like, well, it's already approved, it's an overlay, and we meet your ordinance. So, um, oh, I forgot what I was gonna say. It must be time to quit. And so one quick question, just kind of a, a, just a matter of procedure. We were, we, and maybe Ryan, you know this, but I think in Planning Commission, we, we really tried, to, when we looked at the last, you know, the last senior project to, I think we really intended, and I think John, you made the motion, yeah. we really intended to basically tie, mm -hmm. but the overall concept has to be approved and go forward before this zoning change is allowed for the senior assisted mm -hmm. living overlay. Did, did we ultimately, that worked. did we do that right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and this is, honestly, this is, and again, there's a reason that, anyway, we, we don't do these a whole lot because of, of, well, lots of reasons, but yeah, so we would have to do a, this one had an added, you know, wrench thrown in it because we, we'd have to do, on anyone that came in, if the underlying zone was business commercial, we'd always have to do that zone change to the, to the assisted living over care. Mm -hmm. Where this one had a zone change to business commercial, a zone and change to yeah. so this was extra. the other one, and then with the concept plan, yeah, so it was all done right and correct uh, as far as, as how we viewed and it, it and everything. And but it reached the intent we wanted, which yep. was if this isn't a good design, then we don't want this to go through. Yep. And we wanted city councils, like, you know, like you said, it's like there's only so much, who knows, you know, when we start looking at the size and the all those things. So yep. I think I think this is great. If Does anyone have any more takeaways? Let's see, comments. I, I know you were going to make a comment. Any more comments? No, I no, I I just loved uh, what Alan brought up. I thought I agree totally. It's what I've been thinking about. You know, I think we're just kind of had a little blinders on. I feel like to a certain extent, and mm -hmm. we didn't really consider like, look, you know, this is sure it's, it's got to be economic. Well, it's a very viable. complex. It's a, it was a yeah. very complex proposal, like Ryan said, with all those yeah. different parts. Probably one of the most complex ones we'll ever see. Um, but if we have Ryan do some research for us. We do some research on our own. We share all our findings. Um, and then I think we can come back and discuss this again. Yeah, and can I just um, verify what you want me to look at just so? So we wanted you to look at any research on um, viable um, business sizes. Okay, I've got um, that. Viable housing yeah. sizes. Um, I would personally like to see what some of the cities that compare to Alpine do. I'd be curious what Alpine, what Highland has, even though they have more of a commercial area. Mapleton, um, Holiday, uh, some of those cities that are a little bit more similar to Alpine. Maybe I would Park, maybe still- Maybe Park City. Maybe Park City. I would that still like to city. see, yeah, I would like to see what some of those have listed for that. Um, and then um, I think, um, we definitely want to see it broken out by mm -hmm. um, 55 and older as yeah. one different thing, and then congregate, assisted, and skilled nursing. Skilled nursing, okay. Uh huh. And and do we want to do? We don't have to. Assisted and skilled nursing can be the same density, but as we look at that, as we look at and do our research, our skilled is it necessary for skilled nursing to be viable to be more dense than assisted? Yeah, I, I mean, just in our general plan, we. we you know, we, we just, we have just those lay it out too. It's just senior housing, mm -hmm. which I think is more independent living. Right. And then the second is assisted living, right. and nursing care, which is you know, right. kind of one of the same. But so. assisted living allows that congregate senior housing in it. And that's where the problem comes in, is having one density for all of well, assisted that's, that, living. That's what I'm saying. I think we understand mm -hmm. kind of, re, you know, like. Yeah, so break assisted living. For the senior housing yeah. overlay. And, right. then, what, and then maybe a different one for assisted living, skilled nursing. And I think right. our senior housing yeah. overlay has been working because we have senior housing overlay projects. 
I don't, but we could research that too. But I feel like the density must be okay because we've got Montadella, we've got other things going in with that. Um, but how much do we want to restrict that congregate senior housing component that's part of assisted living? Yeah. Do we want to make them match what our other senior housing is? Or do we want to allow a slightly more dense yeah. no, senior you're, you're housing already, as part of that? You're right. This language that we're looking at tonight is only applicable right. to assisted living, congregate living, or nursing care. And see, so I think we need to break those out yep. into three categories with different densities. That's my do thought, you, anyway. Do you also want me to look at total acres allowed? Thought, aren't those all the same thing, Jane? Well, I mean, I mean, if you're gonna they're, they're all conglomerate under senior house or under assisted living, but they're not because there's. There's the assisted living where there's minor amount of help, and then there's the skilled nursing. And then within the assisted living, you can have a certain percentage of it could be congregate living, which is you have the option to go get help, but you don't have to. So it's basically senior housing overlay. So they had in their, in their design, a huge portion of that, that three level building was basically senior housing but with the option to go get food if you wanted to, and the option, so it was basically yeah, an apartment I, I, I for mean, senior I, I, housing. Look, I, I mean, I, I, we're not just singling out one project. No. Like we're just gonna use that as an example. No. I mean, part of my criticism of that was, like, like, look, if I'm 55, 56, and I just want a turnkey place, mm -hmm. where like, you know, I wanna leave it, I mean, I, I almost want, like, I, I, don't, I don't know that I basically want to just turn the lock in my assisted living facility mm -hmm. and then go off to Hawaii for a month or something, mm -hmm. right? Like, but to your point, like for example, I'm, and I'm just going by personal experience, what my mom, you know, we mm -hmm. had to research all this for my mother, she's in an assisted living facility, but when you are pretty independent and you don't need that much, you know, I mean, it's all there if you want it, mm -hmm. then you pay kind of level one. Mm -hmm. If, mm -hmm. hey, you, you, you really can't get around, you've got to have somebody bring like, like nursing care to your room and bring you your food mm -hmm. and take it away. I mean, at some point you're just not as mobile, or you're not mm -hmm. as healthy, hey, you're kind of level two. And, do you and then there's kind of a level three. Mm -hmm. And then by the time you've like, hey, if Lost you get to memory dementia whatever. memory, you sort of move from one side of the building to the other side of the building and then you only leave out the back right. door. Well, if you look at our assisted living definition, there is the definition of congregate, so there's different definitions within our assisted living. And I think that is still where the crux of the matter lies with the density, is that congregate style living that isn't really assisted living yet. So we, I kind of thought assisted living, congregate living, and nursing care was all pretty much in one building and the same thing. Yeah, do you wanna explain? <clears throat> no, I was just gonna say, so we've got in the definitions, we have one for uh, elderly or older, which is, um, I don't know if that you know, really matters in this conversation, but assisted living facility is, is a definition, congregate living unit, and then nursing care okay. are kind of the three that we, we break them up as. So I, I, it might be helpful just to attach a, a Let's get dwelling some definitions, or a de maybe. density of those, of each one. And but, but, yeah. but my sense is in practice, all of those three are under the same. Probably run together they quite are. a bit. Yes, right. But the density is the same. Maybe, well, I, 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 I'm getting confused. Changes, yeah, it might be, the but the, maybe the actual room doesn't change. I don't know, but I seemed to think yeah. that they had some in there that were bigger apartments with a little kitchenette. There were some that were smaller that were like a studio apartment yeah, with only a, you, you know. want to pay more. But my sense mm -hmm. was always the density is pretty much the same yeah. in those. You're all in the, the same And the care is just different. That's it's the way it works. Pay more for a higher level of care. Okay. And I think the higher level of care you get, the less impact you're going to have on the surrounding area, right? Like you're not going to be driving as much. If right. You yeah. So, but his, his point, though, is still the same, is do, then in that case, if that's the way it's laid out, then it doesn't make sense to have different densities for different levels of care. So we need to find that out. I, I, yeah, I honestly, just my sense that yeah, there's that probably one density for... Uh, probably particularly for, for the senior housing overlay, which we haven't seemed to have a problem with. No. Not know what our ordinance the, says about that density. And there's probably a, another density for, the, you know, for, for 3.4 assisted living. And then, and then he said nursing care. But, but I'm just saying, I think that's the same density. It's all in the same building. 
They're all under the same roof. It's where you. I have don't know. All let's those. let's I, research that. Yeah, and I'm, it, we will for sure do that. I'm saying is is if you meet the definition of needing assisted living, we could probably have the density be a little higher because, like I said, your impact's not to where you're in a, a congregate right. the least amount of care. You're probably going to have maybe a higher impact on roads and on you know different things like that. So maybe we'd have a little less dense on that part. I don't, right. So but he's yeah, just saying that the sure, apartment yeah. numbers would stay the same. It would yep. be ju you just paid more. And so in, if that's the case, then it doesn't matter what your impact is. It's just you have this many apartments, and whatever level of care the person pays for is what they get. Yeah. And so yeah. it depends we, on how it's set up. And, and we just wouldn't, I mean, we wouldn't look at how much they pay per, you know what I mean? So I don't. I don't no, that's, right. That's, so that's, that's the issue. It's just yeah. a density yeah. 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 issue. Yeah. 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 I think we're on the same page there. Okay. Well, we definitely okay. need to learn more. Um, so we need to have a motion to table it. Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion that we table the discussion of increase or uh, changing the density requirements for the senior housing and assisted living overlay zones until we get more information from staff. I'll second that. We have a motion by John McKay, a second by Suze Wittenberg. Any discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, passes unanimously. Okay, moving on to, I closed my computer. Communication, where are we at? Anybody have any communication? Okay. I was just gonna update everyone on the last one that we had, sorry Mike's not on. Um, City Council approved the commercial business sign uh, edits that we made, and then the ethics sections was passed with some minor changes, but Great. nothing too crazy. And, and the rezone, they the the applicants pulled, pulled it okay. before it went before they. That's get what I wondered. Okay. So what was that one? The, the rezone. Lupine, that we did last time Lupine on Drive, Drive rezone. Yeah. 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 yeah, they did. Yeah. They didn't go. They, to, they didn't proceed. To they didn't proceed. It. So yep. Thank you. Yep. Appreciate that. Anything else? Okay. Um, now we need a motion to approve the minutes from the last meeting. Sue, <laughs> did you read the minutes? I did read the minutes. Go for it, Suze. Then I, what do I say? I move. I move that we approve that, the minutes. That we approve the minutes from last March planning 7th. commission, March 7th of 2023. Okay, we have a motion by Sue Wittenberg. We have a second? Second. By, second by Alan McDonald. Any discussion on the motion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, do we have a motion to adjourn? I move that we adjourn. Second. John McKay moves that we adjourn. Alan McDonald seconds it. All in favor? Aye. 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 I thirded it. Well Meeting done. adjourned. Well done. Good job. Good job. Good job.